Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the midweek show. How are we all doing, guys? Hope we are all well. Thank you all for tuning in today. Airline is live midweek madness. Is uh, having a bit of madness just getting the uh, last few minutes together when we're uh, we're all cooking on the gas now. I think all good. Uh, got a Singapore taxi out as well, which is going to start the show nicely. And uh, yeah, we should be uh, should be all sorted now. How are we all doing, chap? Welcome in. Let's get a few things fixed. There we go. And uh, five five from Matt. Yeah, it is cold today, <laughs> chaps. It is cold. Andy's up there in about nine million <laughs> layers today. It is chilly and uh, it's really windy. Like it doesn't look it, but it is. Like you can probably hear it. It's like a really consistent wind, not like gusty like we usually get at Manchester. So this could be interesting. Let's see. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to definitely be a. A weird one today because I kind of got up this morning and thought, oh yeah, it looks all right. Just went out as normal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's definitely changed. We definitely got that cold breeze, I think, which is causing the uh, the majority of the issues today. It's like a wind chill. It's like really cold. I'd say so. I think it is the wind that's kind of kind of doing it, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, welcome to everyone tuning in. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the Twitch crew as well. Hope you guys are all right. Nice little shot, a little and large there. It's an A350 Singapore taxis out. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, nice shot. Nice shot. How are we doing, folks? Let's get some names in the chat. We've got Mod Terry, all the mods in. Terry, Matt, Loopy. Uh, let's get some hearts in the chat. I think Laurie's not feeling too well today, guys. So hopefully she feels better soon. And uh, Practically Geek, how are you doing, mate? Hope you're doing well. Happy birthday, Practically Geek, by the way. Is it your birthday today? Birthday, yeah. Happy, he, happy birthday. He gave us a share on the old X and mentioning it's a birthday special for him. Oh, nice one. Have a great day, mate. Jen's up and awake as well. Hello, hello. Great stuff. Well, I suppose she would be. She started work at 9 o'clock. <laughs> I know. That's, uh, that does help, doesn't it, being awake at work? <laughs> Jepson saying, just in time to see my wife taxi uh, take off. Sorry, she's on the Singapore. Nice. Yeah, just in time for that then. Uh, Paul, good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. Have a good day at work, mate. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, Yorkshire Rose is lurking whilst working, as usual. Great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Cheers, Yorkshire Rose. Appreciate it. Lauren, uh, good morning to you as well. Pauline B's in there as well. Just uh, talking about the uh, newsletter before we went live. We've still got a bit of work to do on that, but that should be out in the next couple of days as well. Yeah. Uh, so stay tuned for that. The Airline is Live monthly newsletter. Plenty to write about, including... I mean, there was one very big thing that happened this month, wasn't there? Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit. Here on YouTube. Uh, Jen says, I'm working, but I might not be awake. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> and uh, Lynn Gator gifting an Airline is Live membership to the community, starting off the support on today's stream. Thank you very much, Lynn. And as you can hear, let's turn that mic up. <laughs> it's windy. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's where the majority of the cold is coming from. That wind, it's uh, it's definitely chucking on a bit of a breeze today. But because it's not gusty, it doesn't look windy. If that makes sense, like usually when it's gusty, the planes are giving it all this and whoa, whoa, and you, the wind sucks whoosh, whoosh, like that. But today it's just like a constant like battering of this yeah it this is, chilly it? wind. But so, uh, we'll plenty see. moving though, which is nice to see. On the uh, on the old apron, so plenty of aviation action on the way. And Bevs, thank you very much, gifting a membership to the community. Hope you're doing well, Bevs. Thanks, Bevs. Appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in today. Just making a couple of corrections. As you can see, Brown Bill's leaning tower of canvas is getting even taller now. So he's put a microphone on top. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. And uh, huge shout out, and let's fill the chat with some hearts, guys, for Paul, who says, uh, could I please get a shout out for my 13-week-old boy, Hayden, who's at home with me after having to have school reconstruction. So uh, a huge, huge uh, surgery for such a young uh, wow. a young baby, and uh, glad to hear, Paul, that he's, uh, he's at home with you, mate, and uh, hopefully enjoying the show. Yeah, um, well, soon. And uh, yeah, hopefully things settle down for you guys as well, mate. But let's uh, let's spam some hearts out in the chat as well. Uh, Colin, uh, good morning to you. Tuning in from the Lurkers Lounge. Welcome, Colin. Hope you're doing well. And if you're just tuning in, you're just in time because the Emirates A380 has been pushed back. They're just uh, taking away the uh, pushback truck and uh, that'll get shifted very, very soon. Now, we like to keep good eyes on what's going on at the airport. You know, if there's anything 
special coming in or whatever. You can usually pick it up on radars. But there's a certain plane that's been frequent in Manchester Airport lately that's really hard to detect on radars. And we've kind of been going off what people say on the inside, you know. And that's the, um, the UAE inside. yeah, UAE um, C-17 that came in, obviously, on the show the other day. Apparently, there's people are saying that there's one in right now at Manchester. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. If anyone in the chat knows, let us know. Um, yeah, because there's supposed to be a couple of these passing through over the next week or so. Yeah. Um, and they seem to be all heading over towards the States, don't they? Yes. Um, and we knew there was more coming, um, but they didn't fall in line with shows. Um, but this one, people are saying it was delayed. Now, we've not had any inside news on this. So, um, yeah, if anyone knows in the chat, that would be, uh, be awesome to know. Yeah, especially if someone's seen it with their own eyes, you know, because... As you've seen on Sunday, these C-17s can be mighty hard to to follow where they are and what they're doing. Yeah. Um, We did get picked up by the Manchester Evening News, who did a little uh, write-up about us, saying that we caught the um, the aircraft uh, departing, which Monday morning we was we put on uh, Twitter as well. Um, It was a nice little shout out from them, and it did make me think. You know, there are a lot of people who use us as like a source of info now. You know, obviously we had the storms and stuff. So I think I'm going to make a bit more of an effort to to put more detail into, like, tweets and, and posts and yeah. stuff about... Because I just said it just took off. Like, it was a nice catch, it took off. But I didn't really say much more of it, whereas a lot of people on the outside were like, well, what is it? What, why is that in Manchester? What? And there's a lot of stuff that we know. Obviously, we don't know exactly why they're here. But we can give info, like, where it's come from, the fact that it's really rare, what is a C-17? There's a lot of info that average Joe might not even know about. And uh, Carl saying, don't mean to moan, but the resolution seems lower today on YouTube. Just make sure you've got the right quality setting on, uh, if you hit the settings cog, make sure you're watching in 1440p. Um, And if you are watching in 1440p, and if anyone else is having the issue in the chat, let us know. But we're not seeing any issues our end. Everything is uh, as it should be. Seems okay. And uh, But thanks for letting us know, Carl. Cheers, Carl. And uh, T Philly nineteen eighty four uh, using a Twitch Prime on the Twitch channel for three months. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And uh, Mike Rogers gifting a membership to the community. Cheers, Mike. Hope you're doing well, mate. And uh, Rob Allen also uh, becoming a Premium Economy member. Cheers, Rob. I see Captain Marks in the chat. He says, "Good morning. About to start my day in the simulator today." Good luck, Mark. Yes. Can we get some good looks in the chat for Captain Mark Langston in the chat? Who's uh, on his way back into flying, and uh, he's in the simulator today. I'm sure he'll boss it. Absolutely. Yeah, good luck, Mark. And uh, we'll get some 10 out of 10s in the chat for Mark as well, um, because we filmed the... Uh, next episode of the Fears of Flying video, which is our most viewed vid- video ever on YouTube, and uh, we've done episode number two, and we were very fortunate um, to get a little uh, sponsorship deal on it, um, and uh, Mark recorded a little piece for that, uh, which you guys will see in the video, and that supported the channel as well, which is fantastic. Um, but with it being our first one, we slightly missed a little detail on it, so I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you more about that in a second after this Singapore uh, departs. departure and uh, viewers family on board that aircraft as well uh, can you wide cam needs to go major left it's uh, it's it's, uh, it's like another nose cam right now um, so uh, what was I saying yes yeah, so uh, we had a little sponsorship uh, deal with that and unfortunately we missed a little a little bit that they wanted us to include in there um, and Mark, being the absolute legend that he is, was driving down to do his training uh, this week. And he said, right, look, don't worry, guys, I'm driving through anyway. 
Um, I can meet you there if you want. Um, and guys, he turned up at our office at eight o'clock at night <laughs> to re-record. Um, literally, I'm not even joking. Thirty seconds of video with us. He drove down to record thirty seconds of video with us. What an absolute legend he is! And uh, thank you very, very much, Mark, for that. I know I said thank you uh, on the evening with you, but we've edited that and it's been sent off for approval. So I really appreciate you doing that, mate. I know it was uh, it was a big trip for you to to do that for us. So thank you very much. He does come across as a bit of a joker, doesn't he, when he's on the stream having a laugh? But he's actually deep down, he's <laughs> he's a really nice guy. Yeah. And um, we even like try to not bribe him, but just say thank you. Has some merch, you know. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to help us. And he's always like, "No, I, I don't want anything. I'll buy it off you though." <laughs> um, like, no, just <laughs> just <laughs> you know, take whatever yeah, you want. Just, just <laughs> have something. Like, just I, I feel bad you you know going out of your way and stuff. But he's just I think he just loves the channel and. Wants to do his bit. Yeah, so now every time he buys merch, we have to wait till it's been delivered, check the track, and it says delivered, and then we refund it. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, so it cost him money to send it back. <laughs> Game plan has been revealed. <laughs> yeah, he is a legend, though. But, yeah, best of luck today, Mark. Uh, hype to see you back in the, uh, the flight deck, and I uh, can't wait to hear all about it. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, Noah becoming a brand new Airliners Live VIP to the community. Thank you very much, Noah. Hope you're doing well. Cheers, Noah. And cheers for supporting the channel with a VIP uh, subscription. People in the chat saying that this Emirates A380 is running late, and it is. It's running really late, like two hours late going out. Uh, I think Tina put a message in saying we were actually quite close to having two A380s on the ground. Yeah, we because, are. Because uh, the other one that's coming in is actually scheduled to land now. So obviously that's running a little bit late as well. Yeah. Um, quarter past uh, 11. Yeah, that's really late as well. That That's uh, that's still two hours, 30 minutes away. <sighs> wow, I wonder what's happened. Which is uh, well past when I think we'll uh, we'll be offline today. But um, yeah, we'll, I think, we'll see. Because I think the usual late runnings would be like half an hour. And I'd, I'd put that down to things like headwinds and stuff. You know, that's not a big deal. But two hours late on both A380s, that's yeah. a lot. And uh, Mr. Bing Bong himself, Paul Davies, gifting a membership to the community as well. Get to it! Stop gifting members! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. Cheers for supporting the channel. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm a little bit tired today, I'll be honest, because I was telling Andy before we went, uh, we went online that I may chat. I've accidentally gone a bit down a bit of a Pink Floyd rabbit hole last night. And uh, I ended up blasting Pink Floyd until about 1, one thirty in the morning. So, <laughs> there we go. But, uh, yeah, there's uh, anybody else in the chat? Any Pink Floyd fans in the chat? Let me know. It's funny how as you get older, your bedtime creeps forwards, and that becomes a luxury. Yeah. Because back in the day, you know, when I was, like, early 20s, 1 a.m. would have been, like, an early night for me. But these days, yeah. you wouldn't see me awake at that time. Like. Well, I um, picked up one of them Samsung smartwatches to go with my phone. Yeah. And um, it, like, analyzes your sleep. Oh, right. And it said the one thing with me that wasn't good was that my sleep schedule was, like, all over the place. Like, right. some days I'll go to bed at, like, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Other days I'll go to bed at, like, half one in the morning. <laughs> And it said you need to like set a sleep schedule, so I um, I've set a task for myself to go to bed at eleven every day, and I've got an eight thirty alarm that goes off um, even on weekends. Now, obviously, for the Sunday shows, I'm up at half six anyway, but on a regular day, I get up at half eight, and um, it's uh, it's been going quite well. I've been doing it for about two weeks now, nice. um, and I've kind of got used to just getting up at half eight. Now I don't even. I wake up usually at like quarter past eight on a yeah. regular and it tracks it and when you look at the um, just your, your sleep quality it has improved as well nice. it's definitely going up so that's, that's really good so do you wear that I assume you wear it all night does that not yeah. is that not uncomfortable to wear a watch um, to bed it was for the first night or two but I've got used to it now because I used to have one as well but what's yours is it like a leather strap or is it like a it's like one of them um I don't know what you call it. Like plastic style? Like, I don't know. It's rubbery, yeah, plastic. rubbery style, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got used to it, mate. Okay. It was, it was a bit weird. Weird the first <laughs> night, but no, you got used to it. Does anyone else in the chat have a smartwatch? Because I don't at the moment. Lots of Pink Floyd fans in the chat. Yeah. 
And I'll tell you what I was watching as we thank uh, Ollie for gifting a membership to the community. Cheers, Ollie. Thanks, and, Ollie. And uh, Pia gifting five memberships to the community. Cheers, Pia. Thank you very much. Trevor Bolton, returning premium economy member. Cheers, Trevor. And uh, Simon Corbett also gifting a membership to the community as well. Absolute legends. Thanks all. Yeah, I used to have a smartwatch, but I don't know. I didn't really use it that much, but think, yeah, I think I like track and sleep, I guess that's... Jen's the same. So she loved her Apple Watch for ages, and then she kind of just fell out of love with it, and she just doesn't use it anymore. honest like you know I said on stream about that nightmare I had where I felt like I wasn't breathing properly was that when you were vaping was it yeah <laughs> but Va vape I, I, like I woke up with a really sore chest and I thought you weren't breathing properly last night that's what encouraged me to get it because it tracks like your oxygen levels through the night mm. so it can it can warn you if like, um, like if your oxygen blood oxygen is dropping below like a certain certain amount right um and it also tracks like how many times you're awake whether you're in deep sleep REM sleep when you're rolling about snoring absolutely everything mm. and uh contrary to what mrs airliner says in the last two weeks it says i've only snored twice so <laughs> i think someone's doing porky pies i think And uh, Graham, thank you very much for also gifting a membership to the community. 15 brand new members on today's stream. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, Graham. Appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, so um, I'm I'm in a weird position with Pink Floyd. I absolutely love the music that I've heard, but I'll be completely honest to say that I've not really expanded much past the sort of default go-to albums, basically. So they're more sort of obscure stuff I've not listened to yet. Um, but last night, I just got randomly recommended a video um, on YouTube. And it was this lady who was like a professional uh, voice coach. And she, don't tell me how she hadn't heard of Pink Floyd, but she'd never listened to Pink Floyd. And she watched the live version of Comfortably Numb at the Pulse uh, concert, which is kind of like one of the best versions of it, everyone says. Yep. And it was really funny to see how she started off just like, okay, yeah, this is kind of cool. And then as the video progressed through, you could just see in her face that she forgot she was doing a video. Yeah. And she was just like, just staring at the screen, just like this, just like how have I not seen this before and she was crying by the end wow you know like big guitar solo at the end and yeah. uh, on that concert like they've got a huge mirror ball and it like opens up like a flower at the end and it's just like oh it's just so good and um, yeah it was uh, it was mad to see so then I randomly went on this bit of a people reacting to Pink Floyd for the first time and people watching it and what was mad to me was that you had um Males, females, older people, people different ethnicities, different age ranges, and everybody was having ide like identical reaction to listening to Comfortably Numb the first time. That's crazy, and it's just mad. And like you say, it's kind of like just proves that music is kind of like a um, like a, a common language, and it? it's just anyone, huh. any age, any any um, you know where you live, anything like that. It's, it just doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was just, it was mad. It was mad, and I was just watching that and just enjoying watching people like react to Pink Floyd for the first time. It was so cool. But um, yeah, if anyone uh, hasn't watched um, Pink Floyd or hasn't listened to Pink Floyd, um, I'd definitely recommend giving it a go. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know, it's just timeless, I think. So good. I think you're right. That's the same with, like, Queen. I know, like, people yeah. have the same reaction listening to, like, Bohemian Rhapsody for the first time. <clears throat> it's just, like, these super bands that... I guess that the current generation probably didn't... 
my experience even growing up. You know, like for me, yeah, I miss the era of like when they were popular, but growing up, you know, my parents listened to them and stuff, and I got to listen to them as a result. Yeah. Whereas these days, like, you know, you think of the current, like, upcoming generation, you know, their, their parents listen to completely different things. So. Yeah. That's it, Lee. Yeah, I was watching uh, watching her channel, The Charismatic Voice. Yeah. Yeah, I watched some of those. Emirates A380 about to depart. We've we'll also got the Air Lingus A330 in the classic colours on the taxi out as well. Super hyped for that. Super duper hyped. Great stuff. See DI fluid on the wings as well, so it's obviously chilly this morning. That's probably one of the reasons why it's been so late then. A that nice departure, that. Does add a bit of time to the uh, the preparations to, to the part. Yeah, well, people in the chat kind of giving me ideas on what to listen to. Yeah, because I definitely want to expand, like, like I say, I've kind of listened to the you know the default stuff I'd say with Pink Floyd, and I really loved it, but mm. um, I do need to branch out and listen to their listen to their other stuff but um, yeah no I'd absolutely love it and yeah one of the things that people were saying was that um, he's like the only he just manages to, like when he does a guitar solo it's like the guitar in, especially in that Comfortably Numb song people like three people who were reacting to it all said it was like the guitar was talking somehow and just I don't know it's so weird to see people watching it for the first time really John that's crazy I mean also another thing I suppose the generation before us, and even just us when we were younger, we didn't grow up with the internet. You know, we, we grew up with CDs and stuff, and you kind of went along what was popular and what kind of genres you like. Whereas now, you only have to swipe through a couple of, well, the TikToks or YouTube shorts to find interesting stuff. And, you know, you could just find yourself listening to something completely different. Live at Pompeii, yeah, I've watched that concert I've, probably I've, five, six times. Yeah. You showed me that one, didn't you? <laughs> That's it's really good. That yeah, concert. yeah, yeah. It is good. It's crazy how that was like mainstream back then as well. You wouldn't oh, no. see mainstream stuff like that anymore. I think that's the, the saddest thing. I know, I'm not saying music today isn't as good because there's still some really good artists out there, but it's just what's mainstream. Is I'd just... say on the majority, music isn't as good. But yeah. That's yeah, just yeah. my opinion. But I think so, yeah. I mean, like you say, there are some artists that are great today, but I don't know, there's just something about it, man. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, really good. You just look at like things like the Live Aid concert and stuff. Mm. And you just see the huge amount of talent on that. Yes. And you just wonder, like, would we have enough, like, amazing artists to <laughs> pull something like that off? I'm not sure, you know. No. I always wondered that about uh, the Eurovision. You know how the UK always does pretty poor? Yeah. But it's like, have we not got any talent anymore? Like, <clears throat> I think well, I we think, do. Uh, do people just not want to be affiliated with it? Is that what it is? Because Maybe, yeah. It's like we don't seem to put forward our best artists. I think you're right. Because I can think of a, a handful of good bands that exist these days, but why don't they do it? Mm -hmm. But didn't, um, didn't ABBA rise to frame, fame from... Eurovision first. I think yeah. they, they took part in Eurovision first and then they got big after that. Is that right, chat? Eurovision is political. It is. You know, even as a kid, I realised that you don't have to be like that switched on to notice that everyone votes for their, their neighbours and <laughs> it's only ever Ireland who vote for the UK and all that. Oh, but, God. but, I Give mean... It, where's the music? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I don't, I, maybe, that's, maybe that is the answer. Maybe can we, we, just, have can we just have a bit of music and a bit of fun? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Mean. I know we did all right with that. The one where it was hosted in Liverpool the, the following time, um, I forget the, the folk, it was called Spaceman, wasn't it? Um, the chap who's... And, um, that was a decent song, and that was even in the charts and stuff after. 
Yeah, the and he did the um, he did the New Year's Eve concert, not the year just gone, the year before, and that was so good. That was really good. This year just gone, everyone got Rick rolled, didn't they? <laughs> Mate, this year just gone. I mean, yeah, I I don't know. A lot of people enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it, unfortunately. The Rick Astley one. Yeah, yeah. My mum's a big fan of Rick Astley, but even she wasn't that impressed. Yeah, I, I wasn't that impressed. With <laughs> She's it. even seen him live and all sorts. Oh, really? Yeah. So. Here we go, another 3.30 on the way out. Beautiful. Love this. Sam Ryder, that's, that's the that's guy. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Erica knows. Erica's down with the kids. I love seeing that. I, I love it. Yeah. I think that should be on all 330s, that ski. I think so. It's a lot of lot of green paint. When you get to Dublin, that is like the most striking thing you see there is just them. And it's like, yeah. you know, you know you're in Dublin when you see them, but hey, we'll take them at Manchester as well. <laughs> they, just, they've got more character to them. You know, we, we, there's plenty of airlines rocking the, the white fuselage on the A330s, you know. Yeah. We've got a bit of... Things to catch up on. We've had Matt Smith, the main man, gifting an Airliners Live membership. Cheers, Matty boy. And uh, Jane Chu, gifting a membership. Hope you're doing well, Jane. Thank you very much for tuning in today and supporting the stream as well. And uh, William Boyle, returning for 19 months of membership. Cheers, Will. Hope you're doing well. And uh, Amy Staff Nurse, also gifting an Airliners Live membership. Thank you very, very much. Hope you're doing well. Hope you've got a 10 out of 10 pot noodle on the menu today. Colin saying, I've travelled to f watch five Eurovision shows throughout Europe. Being in the audience is amazing. I oh, wow. Am I can imagine that, Colin. I we have one of my mates at work used to, when they did it in Malta, he was on the production crew for it. And he said, that, like, the sheer amount of production oh. and lighting and effects and stuff that go into it is just, like, beyond... Mm just a huge huge amount of production like they're in there for like weeks before the show wow yeah um, did you know the um, I read once that the, the scoring is um, not rigged but it, it's you know when they reveal the points and it's always in like a random order who who um, you know what order they and they read out the scores that's actually rigged in a way because that, that's actually designed in a way that makes it more tense you know so it's not just a snowball of like oh yeah. he's won immediately it's always like they deliberately make it so that it reveals the winner over time oh, right. it's actually um, I wouldn't say rigged I don't know what the word is for that but it's actually you know it's, it's dramatised yeah it? it's uh, <clears throat> manually tampered it's, shall we say yeah. not, not in any order <laughs> yes what, not what, in a what random order say? Um, what, what's the word no particular order no particular yeah. order except on your route yes but but it, it, the votes are legit well as legit as political but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roy returning for 14 months saying 14 months uh, went past fast went by fast sorry saying Roy thank you so much mate it's great to have you with us hope you're doing well as well hope Eric's uh, doing well as well on uh, on his shows I know he was at uh, East Mids the other day wasn't he yes Mon Monday I think or, or last night actually the whole blur into one at this point. Mondays and Tuesdays are very busy days for us in the office. Mondays Jake. especially. <laughs> yeah. Hey Jake, how are you doing, mate? Hope you're doing well. Yeah, we're currently uh, we've had a, we're having a bit of an upgrade in the office, bit of an upgrade. So we're gonna see. Well, we've sent the forms off. Uh, hopefully, Royal Mail are gonna come to us now. So we, we can be arsy with them. Oh, excuse me. Hey, hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right, Flemo. <laughs> Martin Flemo. Hope the school's not got me on. Sorry if any any kids are watching. Yeah, so we can... Uh, that's the first time, I think, in five years, I think I've ever swore on Airliners Live, uh, so you'll have to let me off. Flipping heck. But, uh, but yeah, so... Um, yeah, so they're going to come to us, hopefully. Oh, mate, I was on a five-year streak and everything. I've done so ruined, well. Ruined you. Ruined. All, all your points are gone. Oh, start again. Yeah, apologies, Jack. Apologies if there's any uh, young ones watching. That's, so that, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's my true feelings on the matter, I think, coming out of the... <laughs> you got a bit... <laughs> you, you got a bit passionate there, didn't you? Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I'm off. See you guys. Bye, I'm sacked. Bye. <laughs> you and Flemo going to the naughty corner. I know. Disgraceful. But, um, no, so what we have to do at the moment is obviously... All our merch is done by us, so there's no, like, drop shipping. There's no, like, 
other party. It's just if you buy a product, it supports the channel, and and then we hand pack it ourselves, uh, and then we usually drive it down to the nearest post office. And obviously, Martin, you say your one's a bit so tricky. I've uh, last two times, I've got the nice lady. Yeah. So we're having a de- we're having a laugh because the window's broken at the minute. So I have to hold the window open for her whilst I slide the stuff through. Typical Royal Mail, like it's been broke a week. It's st- it's like one of the main things they need to use, and obviously it's not getting fixed. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're having a laugh with her. Um, the other lady is very hit and miss, isn't she? Yeah. If she yeah. gets up on the right side of bed, she's uh, she's she has a bit of a laugh with you, but other times she just doesn't doesn't speak to me. Yeah. The one the one, one by mine's nice, but yeah. So anyway, we have to we have to take them. You buy and them. We have to, they have to scan them one by one. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Like, mm. if you rock up with a hundred parcels, they need to then go one scan, two scan. It's like, and you have to stand there, and you can tell they're a bit annoyed that you've done that, even though it's given them business and stuff. It's just stuff they don't want to deal with. Especially when you've got a queue of three or four people behind you with one parcel, yeah, and they're waiting, and they see you come with two big boxes like this, and it's, it's just awkward. So anyway, um, yeah, Wait. we've uh, we've applied for. Um, them to come and collect from us so hopefully um, that'll be a thing now what that means chat um, just to let you guys know I'm sure it won't make any any difference but um, it just means the merch will be getting picked up uh, once a week so um, but we've been doing that for the last uh, last couple of weeks anyway and we've not had anybody sort of complaining or anything so um, so yeah they'll be coming to us once a week and collecting uh, collecting all the orders yep That'll be good. That'll be. Um, yeah, I think it'll be good. A lot, a lot easier for for us too. Especially, I guess this year we've had a good push so far of just kind of increasing time management and stuff. You know, when you're running a business like this, and especially when you've got a lot going on, as we do, it's very easy to get like cluttered with all the different tasks and end up doing things that don't really amount to much, and you just spend all day doing something. You know, often me and Martin, for example, um, we'll spend all day writing a script or researching a video. And then just not go with it because it's at the end you'll be like, well, that, that's not very interesting. I, like for example, I, I think you did one as well, but mm-hmm. I, I did one about Flyby, um, where I spent all day writing notes about why Flyby failed. I thought it was really interesting um, and why they failed twice, for, uh, for example. And I got to the end and I was going into all like different you know conglomerations and different like uh, you know where the, the company can merge with other companies and over time it was really interesting. But then at the end, I was like, this is boring. <laughs> like, this, <laughs> what is this? Like, who, who's going to watch this? I, I know it's probably a handful of people in the chat who are like, wow, I, I really want to see that. But, guys, I think the majority of people, it's old news. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? <laughs> That's the thing. It is just a case of, like, prioritizing. Like, say, I did a, a script the other day that we kind of it got to the point where we were ready to film it, and then we read through it, and we were just like, no, this needs a lot more work, and is it worth putting the work in, and yeah. we're not leaving it. So it is, it is, um, yeah, it's one of them. I think it's just a case of just learning what works, really. So, I mean, Airliner's Lounge is still very new for us, and it's a very new style of uh, content yeah. as well. Um, but we've got two videos um, that are going out. Um, obviously, the Captain Mark video, uh, for the fears of flying, so we're looking forward to that. That should be out in the next couple of days, and we've also got a video on the Pratt and Windy, Pratt and Whitney, Pratt and Windy engines, Pratt, <laughs> Pratt, <laughs> when Pratt and Whitney engine troubles, which um, is ready to be released as well. But we're just holding on to that until after, just to space it out a little bit. Yes. Tap Air Portugal, uh, sorry, Iberia Express uh, on the way out to Madrid. Yeah, so that's C17 on Monday as well. Um, we had the C17 on uh, Sunday. And um, was it that exact one at departing on Monday morning? It might have been, actually. Uh, I went down to uh, catch it departing on Monday. And it was due out at 9 a.m. And as I was driving down, it was all looking good for 9 a.m. But apparently, I'm not going to go into details, but apparently there was a, a, a bit of a an issue with the aircraft going out. And it had to be delayed by about an hour, which is fine, whatever. 
Um, but the problem is, it was going to go on 2-3 left, which is the other runway. And I was stood on south side, really excited to get it. Head on, big C-17, quad jet, blasting out. Would have been an amazing clip. It was cold, it was raining, it was just miserable. Um, I had to sort childcare and stuff out to get there in time. Got there at quarter to nine, thinking, oh, I missed it, I missed it. Got there and it was still there. Thank you, great stuff. Um, waited around, and then apparently there was a power cut at the um, the south fire station. So they had to close runway two early, um, which they do sometimes anyway, for, you know, if it's not busy enough and stuff. I, I understand it's not the end of the world. But yeah, it ended up going on two, three right, and the whole time I was there, like, should I go to the RVP? So, you know, I, knowing my luck, if I went to the RVP, it would have, like, gone as I was going between the two places. <laughs> um, but it was great to see, anyway. It went out on a 2-3 right. I got a little clip of it as well. You can see that on our Twitter, as well as on, I on Facebook as well. I'm probably going to make a little edit on YouTube of it. Um, what I might do is I'll see if another one comes in this week. Maybe we can get another clip. But as far as I'm concerned, the problem is we've already seen them on, like, 2-3 right and 2-3 right departure. So coming down and getting it again is just going to be the same clip, sadly. So... Yeah, but it's been amazing seeing them, though, these C-17s. Yeah, they're really <laughs> nice, and you, especially with the... are going to go out on south side, I'll come down and get a picture uh -huh. as well, because you don't really get the sense of scale when they're on 2-3 right. Exactly, yeah, um, I'd love to see it on south side. So head over, head over there, we really appreciate it. And Ash saying, hi guys, I sent a clip of my pilot friend uh, landing at Manchester yep. uh, for his first time last week on Insta, if that's yes. cool with you. Uh, absolutely, yeah, please, please, um, please do, mate. And... Uh, if there are any pilots watching this back and you want us to catch your arrivals, please feel free to send us an email and uh, we can also um, do it privately as well. Uh, I know I've got a couple of friends who fly and uh, we see them regularly um, yep. and I see them regularly on the cameras in front of me, but we don't shout them out because they want to re remain uh, anonymous, sort of who they're working for and stuff. So if that's you and you'd like to see yourself on the channel and just make sure we focus on you without necessarily saying we're doing so, you can also drop us an email uh, for that as well. Um, Flemo's in the chat. I thought he was here. So he went, where I know. That? <laughs> I heard him say a word before. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Flemo, if you will. I know Flemo is... Uh, are you still planning on doing that little quiz, are you, on Discord? What we've been dabbling with, folks, is uh, using the Discord, which I recommend every one of you to join, um, which is like a free plat like platform to chat when we're offline and stuff. Uh, it's got voice rooms on there. And every two weeks, I'm hosting uh, on a Tuesday evening, 7.30, a, a little games night, a little social games night. And I know Flemo is uh, planning on doing a quiz night for that as well. So you folks can all get involved. It's free to partake. Uh, you just have to be a VIP of the channel um, because it's in the VIP room. And I've been pretty secretive about it so far because we do have like... 2,000 VIPs. <laughs> so if I started posting it everywhere, I think we might get overwhelmed. And it's in a voice chat room, so I don't want a thousand people rocking up, and it's just unusable. Um, but I think the quiz will be a good way to access that and, and, and get us all together, like a pub quiz vibe, I guess. Yeah, and we're also making an effort with uh, behind the se behind the scenes stuff as well. Um, unfortunately, with YouTube, you can't upload just a little um, post with a small video on it. You have to upload it as a video, which kind of makes things difficult. So what we're experimenting with doing is just putting some short clips in the VIP chat on the Discord as well. So make sure you check that because there'll be some behind the scenes stuff in there, and then photos, of course, we're sharing on uh, the usual uh, YouTube and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on it. Um, and we are going to be trying to make a lot more content for you guys uh, behind the scenes as well. Yeah, uh, Jill's saying can't do Tuesdays. A couple of people have said that. So I guess it's either Tuesdays or Wednesdays. We can move it in, in future weeks, but for us it's like Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays are awkward because it's like either our day off or the weekend uh, for us. Um, Mondays and Thursdays are obviously flight sim nights, so it kind of leaves Tuesday, Thursday. Um, so... Yeah, one of them nights would would work, I think, but we'll see. I think I think I like Tuesday because it's, it's there's yeah. nothing on airliners live on a Tuesday. Uh, Linda, thank you very much for sending in a two pound donation, saying uh, try a bit of Run Rig. They're an epic band, saying Linda. Thanks very much, Linda. I'll uh, take note of that and have a look when I get home. Um, I've never heard of them. Yeah, it's no. a new one for me. Uh, Ollie, thank you very much for your donation, saying I think someone doesn't like Royal Mail. <sighs> <laughs> 
Maybe, maybe, maybe. At least, at least he's being honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gerald, thank you very much for gifting an airliner's live membership to the community. Really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Putting us to 19 new members on today's midweek show. An awesome uh, start to the stream, guys. One ninety nine for Martin Swear Jar saying Owen. Cheers, Owen. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate that. And uh, I'll put it next to yours. <laughs> And uh, Tar Darren Taggart with a uh, five-pound donation saying, Hi, Martin and Andy. Um, good morning. Treat yourself to something nice to lunch, says Darren. Thank you oh. very much, mate. That's very kind of you. Cheers, Darren. Rachel is saying, Hi, guys. Hope you re Have you received the congratulations card we sent for reaching the one mil? I'm not sure, Rach. When did you send it? Let me know. Do airlines live use Sky Glass? Uh, no, I don't have Sky Glass. No. What's Sky Glass? I think it's the telly, isn't it? It's the it's the telly that's got like Sky built into it. Oh. Yeah, oh. I'm not. I've never. My dad uh, has Sky, but he has the box. I've never had Sky. I'm not really that into sports and stuff and the other stuff. Um, yeah, I, re I very rarely watch telly to be honest. It's, I'm usually either watching Twitch streams or I'm watching YouTube or literally scrolling my life away on reels that me and Andy just send back and forth <laughs> to each other. How do you communicate? <laughs> literally, if you see me and Andy's Instagram messages, it's just Martin sent Andy a reel. <laughs> Andy replied with a reel. <laughs> have you seen this trick on Premiere with this reel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even have a TV. Uh, I, I have TVs, but I don't have like an aerial or I don't know what, what it is these days. Satellite is a cable. Uh, Sky, I don't know. I don't have any of that. I just have Netflix, YouTube, and that's it. <laughs> oh, wow. Gemma, thank you so much. Sending in a £10 donation to the stream, and it's your first ever donation to the stream as well. Thank you so much, Gemma. That'll, uh, that'll go towards helping the cost of the channel today. C-17 departs from Abu Dhabi. What? Well, it's probably going to be here <laughs> a lot later on then. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like anyone knew any info about the C-17. Like, I'm off wondering if we're just going to see one appear from around the corner I've not had any heads up Rachel just said I sent it to your office about 10 days ago oh. but I've missed the first message Rachel so she said that oh she's... sorry you've sent a congratulations card yes thank you very much yes we did we've uh, we've put it up actually in the office um, yeah really appreciate that we uh, we got that in a uh, in a little flurry of letters. Um, I think I, I remember week. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought she meant, like, just, just today or, you know, like, just recently. But, yeah, thank you, Rach. I, I do know the one now. Yeah, we've uh, we've got it put up on our wall next to the images that have been donated to us as well. And we also had a card which was donated to us. Um, it was right at the beginning when we first moved into the office, wasn't it? Uh it was a card up on the uh, on the white. Oh, uh, from Rachel. It didn't say like "yay" on the front. Yeah, so it I think... said "yay," and it was. I was like, "Wow, have they managed to find that card?" <laughs> <laughs> Barbara P in the chat. Hey, Morning. Barbara, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. As Barbara enters the chat, there's a prop lining up on the runway as well, <laughs> just in time. And Gee. Lee Fuller gifting an airliner's live membership, putting us to twenty brand new VIPs. It's the best way to support the channel, and it helps. Uh, give back to our awesome community as well thank you very much lee yeah i'm so out of touch with all these like new sky things like is virgin tv still a thing i remember that used to be pretty 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 big they're kind of like rocking the internet space now aren't they virgin media mm. Air Lingus atr 72 rotating really early as per usual for the turboprop airliners Already nice and high into the air there. Great stuff. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm sure I remember back in the day when, like, you know, the first Virgin TV people were out there and they were showing off, like, oh, you can rewind live TV and all this. Yeah. But I think Virgin, they always had, like, their own dedicated cable lines, didn't they? That was always, like, the reason why they were a bit pricey. Yeah. And back in the day, the internet used to be pretty hit and miss. It used to be, like... You still a lot of throttling, didn't they? You I think it still is quite pricey, Virgin. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I really don't know. Like I said, we just pay Netflix and that's it. We don't. We barely watch it. It's more for the kids' stuff that um, it's it's really good for. Yeah, literally, uh, my life is either Twitch TV 
um, or uh, YouTube, YouTube, yeah, <laughs> YouTube Premium, Twitch. What's it called Twitch Night, Twitch Night, or Twitch Turbo? Turbo, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, YouTube Premium is great. I've got into the habit of like instead of using the watch later thing, I just download the video, so that no matter where I am, whether I'm on a plane or somewhere with no cell coverage. I've got this video I can just watch, you know, just nice. a little bit of time. It's a good idea. Turkish A321 on the uh, taxi out to uh, depart. No worries, Tom and Ann. I hope you have a great day and enjoy your calls. Yes. It's always nice seeing you on the weekends. Yes, we got the Emirates A380 due in, I think, if it's running that late. Um, hopefully we'll catch it during today's show I think there's some aviation shows and movies on Netflix nice Samuel yeah um, I don't typically watch unless there's some like it's normally like binging series for me it, I think it was Breaking Bad that really got me into it Jen's watching Reacher at the moment Reacher yeah that's uh, it's quite cool Reacher Tom and Ann gifting a membership to the community cheers Tom and Ann hope you're doing well guys I've got your uh, cap in my... Uh, sorry, your um, beanie in the car. Beanie. Ready for Sunday. You got the gold beanie, have they? They have. Ooh. Qatar uh, A350-1000, just making the left turn over Hyde. That's going to be arriving with us after this Turkish departure. Yes. And uh, we uh, we have a helicopter that may transit the field uh, shortly. Uh, Cheshire helicopters, um, and that seems to have took off from down south somewhere. Nice. Um, which is directly ahead of us over Wilmslow, so we may see that. Did I I show you the pictures that Sam got of uh, G uh, G Grid 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 A, wasn't it? The or Grid C, the no. National Grid heli. She um, after it flew round when we were seeing it on the stream. It went back to Barton for a refuel, and Sam actually, I think, refueled it. And also, like, the the guy who was piloting it was like, oh, come and have a look around. Oh, and she was, like, having a look inside, and it looks so cool, that heli, from, from the inside. you got all, like, the screens. and Yeah, we'll have to see it next time it's in. Yeah, it, it's a really nice heli. Aerodrome, they just get so many cool visitors that you kind of don't even realize like what most of them are. You know, like the National Grid helicopters, for example, fitted with that thermal imaging camera that scans the power lines. Um, oh, I can hear that helicopter somewhere. I hear it too. I can't, I don't see it. Is it... Straight ahead. Over, over oh, the yeah, threshold. I see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's smart, isn't it? Yeah. No player props on that. <laughs> cool, though. Transiting over the airfield at the moment. What about clearance from ATC to do so? What a great view they'd have. Sometimes see the helimeds and the police as well doing that same same uh, route. And Dad's secret kitchen saying work's been cancelled, so I get to sit at home and watch you. Hey, there you go. Work's been cancelled. Wow. As of the... Uh... Qatar A350-1000 next to land. Yeah, I'm not sure where that's going to track, it doesn't say. Beautiful A350 coming in. My fairly favourite helicopter is a Chinook. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that, Paul. Ooh. Probably agree with that. Either that or the Apache. The Chinook has just such a distinct sound, isn't it? Bop, 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 yeah. bop, 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 Yeah, the Apache's cool. Would you class the Osprey as a heli? I don't, I don't think it is. I don't know what, what is what is that classed as. I think, who was I speaking to? I think it was one of the people at the fire and rescue team at Barton. And I asked them, I was like, I think it was, yeah, yeah, I think it was. And I said, what is it? Is it a heli or a plane? They said, it's neither. It's got its own special category, basically. I forget what it's called. VTOL. 
Maybe, yeah. Um, maybe someone could Google it. There's a, it's got its own designation, pretty much. It's neither. Oh, cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Because it is. It's like, what is it? I mean, it does. It does both it, it planes and helis. <laughs> but can it? It can't land whilst planes, can it? I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, probably not. Because those um, those props, I think, are uh, much bigger. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That hell he's uh, descending into Bart and Matt saying, oh, that's awesome. Well, there you go. You'll uh, get a nice view of that, mate. Maybe Sam's uh, on the other side waiting for it. She often refuels these helis. Of course, Bart has, like, two kind of sectors to it. You've got the airfield and you've got the heliport as well. Some of the more corporate stuff, as well as, like, the, uh, the police and the helimed will be based on the heliport side. Ian saying, any news on the logo? It definitely burns into OLED TVs. I can only watch for 10 minutes. Really, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of people having this. Because what? we're not the only people to put logos on videos. Like, Big Jet does it. Um, any sports. Any sports channel does it. Like, are we literally... <laughs> what is it about ours that is different to everybody else's? Yeah, and also YouTube overlays the logo manually, like, on the bottom. Right. Yeah, YouTube does it as well, yeah. So it should have the little logo at the bottom right as well. Yeah, do let us know, though, if there's something that we're missing. Beautiful landing there. From the Qatar Super Airliner, the A350-1000. We've seen this exact one a few times. Recognize the registration. I think I used to have a plasma TV. I don't think that ever had issues with um, the logo's too deep red. Surely it's more of a luminance thing, though. Surely if it was white, it would be worse than, than red, is it not? I'm not fully sure about how plasma works. Obviously, LCD, you got RGB. But they're saying it's on OLED as well. Oh, no, you won't, you won't have issues at OLED. Nah, definitely not. I'm sure OLED is is either on or off, is it not? It's yeah, it's just it's just it's a just a it's just LED. A LED. Yeah. It's on or off. It wouldn't. It's, it's got no sort of resonance, surely. Mm. I think it was more of an issue on plasma TVs back in the day, just because of how they display colours. Um, no, I can't. Because think, um, for example, like your phone, for example, is usually OLED these days, and obviously you'll have like UI elements that are always on. Um, such as, like, I don't know, the battery indicator and stuff like that. Mm. Like, they don't burn in maybe over insane amounts of use. Like, you're talking six hours a day for three, uh, two, three years maybe. But I, I think, think with, I think a lot of this is kind of like, what's, is, are you allowed to say this in 2024? Uh, old wives' tales, is that what they say? Uh, uh, am I allowed to say that? I don't know, but you know what I mean. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like what's the, what's the word? Well, that is yeah. I know you, you're pretty much right there. To be fair, is it actually happening, or is it a lot of people are saying it's happening, and everyone's kind of saying it? You well, know? you you know what? I'm gonna research this. Yeah, we'll look into it because I I'm curious anyway. Because at least then, if someone does say it, we at least are fully educated on that. But to my knowledge. I don't think it's a huge issue, but, yeah. Qatar Airways A350 looking beautiful. Coming into Terminal 2 here at Manchester Airport. Yeah, I thought so as well, Rob. Yeah, they do have pixel shift. Folklore, folklore, yeah, that's that's what I was looking for. Yeah. But yeah, if we could be convinced into, you know, the 
that fact that happily I mean, I'll like turn it. it off for today, but I mean, I'm just baffled in 2024 that that's even a thing, to be honest. And again, why is it just us? Yeah. Do you guys who struggle with this, like, not watch Sky Sports or don't watch the news or every channel, every major channel has a logo on the screen and it's not always transparent either. It's, it's or semi-transparent. It's literally full block. Well, like BBC News, they've got the time in the corner and mm. Sky Sports have got the score on the screen all the time. Do you know what I mean? Why is it just... I'm baffled. Yeah. Always yeah, we're not going to move the, start moving the logo around the screen through the show, guys. That's not, <laughs> that's not going to be a thing. That, uh, uh, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Norwegian, 7.37 coming in. I can understand if this was on for like 15 hours or something, but for a little two and a half hour show, I can't imagine that's going to be a thing. Yeah. So that's about the length of a football match. Doesn't make any difference on my black and white TV. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking as well, you know the laptops that we have, they're OLED. <laughs> and it's like, they obviously have like the Windows bar on there. And I don't know, like I've never seen any. Yeah. And, and they're years, they're like one and a half years old now. So. I'll be, I'm in the to I'm in the not convinced category at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely read up on it though. I'm, I'm, I am curious though. Yeah, we'll look into it. Don't don't worry, chat. We'll we'll make sure. But yeah, like, I'm just yeah. I, I, I like I say I'm baffed that you watch a game of football. They've got the score in exactly the same place for two and a half hours. So why is that different to our logo? You know, I, I don't get it. Mm. Don't get it. Or if anything, let us know where you've read up or like heard that because I'm just curious. Yeah. Because yeah, definitely adds to our research, our homework. I do have an idea about where it may have emanated from. And um, we got recommended to do this by people who vision mix for Sky Sports and BBC News. So <laughs> I don't think they'd recommend us to do this if it was something they knew was gonna cause problems for people at home I don't oh anyway whatever beautiful Scandinavian Neo coming in next and that's uh, also uh, in view at the moment on the airfield is the, the Tui Dreamliner on a taxi out as well a nice new other uh, modern airliner yeah it's on its way out to Varadero so we'll see that departing very soon nice Decent landing on the Scandinavian A320 Neo. Very popular airline at Manchester. Lots of connections to Scandinavia. I used to be a big fan. I used to watch a lot of, I know he doesn't fly for them anymore, but uh, Bjorn Pilot on oh, YouTube, yeah. YouTube. He's really good. <clears throat> He's one of them guys who made a lot of really interesting short videos. And you just see him getting reposted everywhere these days, you know, like exploring like the crew rest on an A350 going into uh, the compartment under the flight deck where they house all the co computers for the aircraft as well and that leads on into the cargo hold as well it's so interesting and talking about like um, how pilots sleep on flights and because he used to do like long haul flights for with the A330 I think A340 as well and then the A350 Yeah, I don't think he flies for Scandinavian anymore. Yeah, exactly, Roata, yeah. 
Yeah, you, most tellies that would be susceptible to that have pixel shift built into the hardware anyway, so it would it would avoid that happening. Mm. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to have the airliner's live logo permanently engraved into your telly? <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> Tap Air Portugal heading off to Lisbon for Embraer in 190. I suppose uh, with this Pratt and Whitney video in the works, it does highlight that here at Manchester we really don't see the E2s anymore um, here at uh, Manchester. It was Predominantly, I know Helvetic flew a few, but it was uh, KLM we saw pretty regularly with them. Yeah, uh, it's a shame because they're now using the the old gen of, of E190s, but also the Transavia 737-700s as well to fulfil that that gap that the E2s have left. And uh, it's pretty shocking how much work needs to be done now to to get them flying again. Mm. But I'd highly recommend folks in the next week or so. Go subscribe to Airliners Lounge. We did a lot of research about this, uh, mainly Martin, of course, uh, forwarding that research. And um, it's really interesting about what actually happened to them. There's a big, big problem with the the, the Pratt & Whitney engines. And it's not just the E2 jets that we're seeing the Pratt & Whitney uh, engines loaded to. We also see them on a lot of, it's like 40% of all A320 Neos, uh, the family, so the A321 Neos as well. Um, but also the A220s only have them as well. Yeah, 40% of the um, Airbus aircraft have Pratt & Whitney engines, but not necessarily have faulty Pratt & Whitney engines. But it's, yeah, it's an interesting video. It's, uh, yeah, we put a lot of time into that one. So uh, we'll be releasing that after the Pilot Explains video. Unless the Pilot Explains one gets delayed, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I've Rachel. Not heard anything back on that yet? We uh, we watch Mental Pilot. He's great. His videos are like next level. Real, really inspiring. short flight for the 737 because we've got 45 minutes Mike, <laughs> come on now. let's let's leave it now go on, sure. don't leave it on Andy can too long because don't stand on the roof we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> great stuff hope you're all enjoying the show so far though folks here on the midweek madness and airliners live make sure you hit the like button as well that helps us out massively and if you're really enjoying the show, you can always support us and help uh, keep us going and providing all these free live streams for you folks uh, by sending in a little tip or preferably gifting a membership or becoming a VIP. Um, you can just do that by hitting the dollar symbol below. Uh, it goes a really long way here on the channel. And if you gift a membership, somebody else uh, in the community gets one month VIP and all the benefits of that. Absolutely. Red Arrow's just done a flyby at Leeds Bradford now over Burnley. Mate, no way. We never get stuff like that at Manchester. Imagine. <laughs> just the Red Arrow's just. Woof. I think they can. Oh, um, I can see them on radar. Really? I'll yeah. keep an eye on that. But. Listen, um, uh, come this way, just make a little like, cheeky left turn there, will do. That'd be nice. It reminds me of when that. Uh, was it the Lancaster bomber yeah. that was doing a display at Stockport, uh, like a festival there? And then did some flying around over, like, um, the observatory over there. And we were following, and apparently called up Manchester and asked to do a flyby. And then uh, they said no. Yeah, I think, <laughs> so, they, I think to be fair, they were, the airspace was a bit too busy. It said, was, yeah, yeah. I mean, there usually are legit reasons for it, but it's I guess it comes part in part with being at a busy airport. But, yeah, it would be, it would be nice. It would be nice. Yes. Joan, thank you very much, gifting a membership to the community. Cheers, Joan. Thank you very much for that. And uh, Roy also jumping on the gifted membership there as well. Thank you very much, Roy. 
and Liam Fletcher gifting to the community as well. Putting us to 25 brand new VIPs hey. today. Thank you very much, folks. Rob, Sam and Jamie all getting gifted memberships there. So if you did get gifted one, make sure you say thank you. Absolutely. As we say all the time on the channel, there's 1,400 people in here. If everyone gifted one membership, that would make the world of difference to the channel. So thank you to everybody for getting involved in that. And uh, we've got another heavy departure coming up for you. Lining up now on 2-3 right, the uh, five-year-old 787 Dreamliner heading out to Varadero. To the airways. They are cool, the, uh, the Red Arrows. I remember we went on a day out to Lincoln once uh, last year, and Ma uh, Sam seen a, uh, the heart in the sky before we seen anything. And she was like, that, that's a heart? Why is there a heart in the sky? <laughs> and she was like, that's the Red Arrows? But we didn't see the actual arrow. It was just a heart Slowly. randomly in the sky. Like, that's got to be the Red Arrows. Carried on, fly uh, carried on driving in, and then when we got parked up and stuff, we've seen them just, you know, going off and... Information around the city it was amazing. Nice, that was well cool. Like free yeah. display. Yes. <laughs> Linda, cheers. Thanks very much for gifting a membership as well. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Julia saying, uh, "Hi guys, great stream. I've been lurking whilst doing the chores. Uh, interesting topics in chat. Absolutely, Julia. Yeah, we don't just talk about aviation here on the channel. We like to have a, a good natter and everybody uh, with everybody rather. And uh, I reckon, I reckon it's about time, Julia. You just." Chill for a minute, get on the sofa, make a brew, <laughs> watch a bit of airliners live. Chores can be done later. <laughs> That's why nothing gets done in my house. And Lauren, thank you very much. Gifting a membership going to Mark Garner. Thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. Lauren. I seen the question from Mark actually saying any new route news that you knew, you know of. Yeah, we've got a couple of new routes starting in the next couple of months. I think April will be the, the month that we really get that. Uh, we did have um, Southwind Airlines going to start a Turkish route in March. I think that's now been pushed back to May, I think I've seen. Um, but we've got in April, I think we're going to be seeing the start of Virgin Atlantic's Las Vegas route with the A350-1000. Luxair are going to start a route to Luxembourg with um, the Q400-8s. Nice. And also uh, Royal Jordanian, which apparently they'll be using predominantly the Dreamliner. I'm so hyped. That's the one I'm really excited for. That yeah. livery is going to look amazing. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to like get a picture of it down by the road. It's oh, yeah. yes. um, Other than them, though, I can't think off the top of my head any new airlines that are... Imminent. I think Air Air India are a bit, you know, up in the air at the moment. So maybe they might start a, a, a route to uh, mm -hmm. Mumbai. I'm not sure. Be nice <laughs> to get some Dash Eights back as well. That's yes. uh, an airframe we just don't see anymore. So yeah, that'd be uh, be really cool. Another another prop for Barbara, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, yes. And uh, Buffalo Tracker gifting a membership to the community. Thank you very much, mate. Air Canada are bringing their actual Dreamliners back for for a Toronto route. That's nice, Mark. Yeah. Last year, what was it? Last year we had we had the. Uh, Air Canada A330s, but then they stopped using them, and then started using that Omni 767, you know, Omni International, the American carrier. Um, that was interesting. And Melissa Rowan, thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. Uh, we're in Manchester, UK, so the current time is 10 past 12 in the afternoon. That was unintentional, Malcolm. <laughs> Air India are up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of uh, aviation puns that you accidentally say. There goes the Pegasus A321 Neo heading back to Istanbul. Lining up Logan Air back to Aberdeen. They're operating the ERJ145 today. Sometimes we see the uh, ATRs or the uh, uh, the 42 order 72. One thing that uh, SBD Travel said uh, he's a, a good uh, good good chap who posts on uh, 
X slash Twitter, whatever you call it, uh, a lot of updates and stuff. He was saying that he reckons that there's a chance that the Turkish routes can just become kind of oversaturated now with the South Wind starting yet another Turkish operator. We've always got, always got already got Pegasus, you've got uh, Turkish Airlines, you've got Sun Express, Corindon do routes as well, and you've got like EasyJet doing routes to Turkey, Jet 2, TUI, there's a lot. <laughs> so, um, another, is there room for another one? I don't know. Certainly there's a lot of demand for Turkey though. And uh, just as I mentioned that, I think there is uh, another Turkish carrier on the taxi out as well. We're going to see that here. Sun Express 737. Oh, Carl Long has just posted a picture of his merch in the chat. He received coin number 99. 99? Oh, I like 99. that number. That's nice. I do need to write a list. You know who's a really good um, bit of uh, source of this info is the Aviation Society because in their um, in in their uh, monthly magazine, Winged Words, there's actually a dedicated article every month for route news at Manchester. So it's uh, that's what I usually read. They'll even include things like airframes and, um, you know, uh, regularity of routes. So they'll say, like, our oh, Qatar or back up to three times a day or whatever. Um, I know there are rumours. There's no official announcement, but Etihad have come out and said that they are going to bring every route in um, Europe, I believe, up to two times daily. Uh, and one thing about Etihad here at Manchester is they're only on once daily still at Manchester so it'd be nice for them to bump that up to two um, but it's just part of the demands there I guess and also one problem that Manchester faces with all the construction work they have is um, availability of, of parking and stands and things like that so um, they just need to keep on top of that make sure they've got the capacity um, and hopefully when they open the second pier uh, or the new pier should I say at Terminal 2 in the next year or so um, that will uh, open up a lot of new space for new airliners. Bizjet lined up uh, waiting to go and that's a uh, Cessna citation heading over to Shannon. Silver Cloud Air. That's a new one for me I think. Yeah. Just waiting for the Logan Air to make its right turn I suspect. BA is a UK flag carrier. I don't think they are you know. They're like what would you call them the national airline of the UK but I think officially the flag carrier is Virgin Atlantic. It's weird, that. Craig, welcome back for 22 months of membership. Saying, just got my gold beanie and I love it, says Craig. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, they did sell pretty fast, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, 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 they did. Sometimes we just put things up and we only order so many and they just fly out. It reminds me of the, the lanyards. Yeah. Yeah, we were like, ah, will, will people buy them, won't they? We, we ordered like 150 of them and they were gone within like, you know, not long at all. Was that the time when you were driving to, to Carlisle, was it? And, and they had all sold out by the time you got there. Yeah. I think it was. There's a space rocket taking off, heading into orbit. Yeah, they'd also, all 150 had sold within two hours. It was wild. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, that, that's it, uh, flying object. BA is a national carrier, but Virgin is the flag carrier. I mean, yeah, I mean, does it matter? <laughs> They're both very British, I suppose. Have all the be gold beanies gone? I think so, John. I think so. Holly saying, I've always wanted one of those seatbelt lanyards, but they've always been sold out. Well, Holly, <gasps> good news for you. We have 150 on the way, which should be with us in the next week or two. So keep an eye on our socials, because as soon as they arrive, we will list them on the website, and uh, you'll be able to reserve yours. So uh, keep an eye on that. The amount of people who ask me that I'm in person, you know, I'll... I remember being like just one example of many. I was over in when I was in Dallas, I was there like plane spotting, and I was with uh, Uber pilot Dave. 
And he was like, oh, the only thing I want is that lanyard with the seatbelt on it. And I was like, mate, they're all sold out. Like, <laughs> and I just get that question all the time. And it's crazy because, like I said, we sold so many of them. Um, but, yeah, I think it's time we bring them back, I think. Sun Express on the way out to Antalya. I mean, the plan was to have them for the task fair, so we might have to just keep hold of a number of them for that if people are waiting to catch them on that. Antalya based airline, Sun Express. We love the colour scheme of their 737s. Flemo's uh, dad was uh, on one of them flights uh, last year sometime. I remember uh, him getting the logo in and infamously putting the logo in upside down. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> really funny. Um, I'd love to fly with them though. They, they look pretty, pretty nice, especially the the Max 8s that they fly, they look pretty smart. Having a look on radar, we've got a few aircraft moving on the ground uh, on the way out. Uh, looks like Aer Lingus and uh, uh, the Aer Lingus ATR as well as also uh, on the push, so that'll be uh, shifting very soon. And they're uh, lining up for the approach in from Alicante. A couple of easy jet aircraft, uh, first of which, uh, as I say, in from Alicante and then the second follow it in from Innsbruck. Uh, so a couple of arrivals come in. Um, yeah, that Red Arrows uh, aircraft is definitely flying around this area. I don't think we'll be lucky enough to see it here, but... Maybe on um, the horizon. It's definitely shifting around. It's, uh, it seems we're going all over the place at the minute. Um, yeah, that's another thing, John. I don't know when they're going to arrive, but John Russell saying get some more travel mugs for TAS as well because they're, they're all sold out as well. I think we have some more of them on order, though. We so, do. They're, they're on the way, but I don't think they're going to be here before TAS, but we will see. Yeah, fingers crossed. Just simply leave me, No stress. Yeah, so um, obviously April, just, uh, is it tomorrow, April? Um, we're going to be uh, hosting the uh, task fair on the 24th. Not hosting it, but we'll have our usual airliners live stand. And that's a, I'm sure all of you in the chat know, but just in case those who aren't aware, and especially if you live in the local area, or just in the northwest in general, uh, it's a exhibition that takes place here at the Runway Visitor Park. It's a memorabilia fair. It's fe featured around, or, you know, based around aviation, and it's basically uh, loads of stands you can come and visit, and you can buy anything you can imagine with aviation, except for airplanes, I guess. You can buy models, you can buy aviation tags, you can buy all different types of memorabilia, and the Airliners Live stand will be there, and we'll be uh, selling uh, our merch. But also, more importantly, we treat it as a a community meetup where you folks can uh, come and hang out with not only the hosts like me and Martin, uh, Matt will be there, but also uh, the mods and the community as well. So, like, usually, um, I mean, all the mods, I think, in the chat bar, maybe one or two, probably will be there. Um, black screen. Oh, no. Oh, I see. Sorry about that, folks. Um, that was my fault. Thanks for letting me know. Um, but, yes, uh, the mods will be there. Yeah. Um, We'll be there, uh, a lot of the community will be there, and it's a great uh, chance to come down to the RVP, do a bit of plane spotting with the community, um, get some swagger as well. I've written a big article about it in the uh, newsletter that's going to be released tomorrow anyway. Apologies for that, and thank you for letting me know in the chat about the black screen. Uh, I just uh, foolishly leaned on a cable and it came out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I saw it. But yeah, in the chat, anybody in the chat going to be uh, going to the task fair? Let me know. Uh, that that's on uh, the 24th and 25th of of uh, February, Saturday and Sunday. But we will only be there on the Saturday, so the 24th. The event is free to attend. You don't even have to book. You just show up. Um, the only thing you may have to pay for is parking if you need that, because you have to pay for parking here at the RBP. Andy check cables. Is that is it sorted now? People want a chance saying it's sorted. Interesting. I'm not, not getting any Discord notifications. Is it just not? I should have. 
Yeah, I didn't get any notification on Discord. Nice, thanks, Discord. <clears throat> Is it going to be a stream on the 25th? Probably not. That is because um, because we're talking just constantly all Saturday. It's a big event. We usually have no voice left by the end, and we're usually knackered. So on the 25th, where the Sunday show would have been, we usually just take the day off. Um, we're usually exhausted, folks. I'm sure you'll understand. Um, but we do have a little thing planned on the Sunday. Um, again, subject to if our voices have recovered or not. Because <laughs> every time I, me and Martin have ever done a task fair, it's usually the next day we, we, don't, we can't talk properly. But um, we do have a little thing planned. Um, but a, maybe a little live stream for you folks. So uh, stay tuned for that. Cassie, hello. Thank you for your order the other day, by the way. <laughs> Hope you're well. It's super windy here in Manchester today, though. You can probably hear it. It's not gusty, though. So, like I said earlier in the show, you probably can't even see the planes getting blown around because when it's this consistent, it's a lot easier to deal with. You're just kind of leaning into the wind and there's no real uh, extra work. Whoa. That's uh, a float. Oh, she's, she's got it. No. Let's go around, I think. As, <laughs> as I mentioned, the gear's not up yet either. There we go, the gear's coming up. That was, uh, <laughs> maybe I jinxed that. Sorry about that, folks, on board. I think that was my fault. But uh, the plane didn't look like it was the wind. It kind of got a sort of ground effect um, floated a bit and then had to go around Did that? Is that what happened then? Yes, yeah, go around, yeah I was just going to say that CFM went off with a bit of a squeal didn't it? <laughs> and yeah. uh, Fina, thank you very much for using your Twitch Prime on the channel for three months appreciate that What was funny is I was just mentioning I was saying it's great windy today but this, and then the plane looked really stable as well and I was like oh look as you can see it's not really getting blown around much. And then it goes around. I really? Was like, I was like, oh, oops. Because that was a weird thing, because I, I heard it going off, but I thought, that sounds like they've they've uh, given that the beans on the way out. Mm. But because I, I, I was just, uh, I was walking behind the tower, I didn't actually see the approach. I just saw it rotating off. Yeah. It just got a bit unsettled right at the last last few feet, pretty much. And, I mean, I, to me, the smart thing was to go around there. Uh, Chris, yeah, it's a little screen in the tower, mate, that shows uh, shows that when it's switched on. The anemometer behind me. Yeah. It's quite cool, actually. It gives you real-time data about the weather, so I think it's like, what, um, temperature and uh, wind and all that. Um, it's quite useful, quite useful, especially on the, the stormy days. And the, um, a lot of the folks at TAS are very interested in weather, aren't they? Yeah. I know Steve... Steve, who does the commentary here, is really into it. He, he'll often do the commentary here and have like a weather radar open and stuff, and just you know monitor that. Weather is super interesting, and we certainly get it at Manchester. Dave Stevens, cheers for using uh, a tier one sub on the channel as well. Thank you very much for that. Cheers, Dave. Appreciate it. And uh, Mr. Bing Bong himself returning. 36 months of the channel Wookie Badge next to his name saying oh. three years on YouTube our time flies eh says Paul yay hey mate hope you're mate. doing well dude hope that, you're doing well Paul that's a long time yeah thank you mate I know he's been around for even longer than that but that's still crazy no yeah, legend thanks Paul uh, did you read out Craig or did we read out Craig I can't remember I don't think so uh Oh yeah, I think I think I did. But oh, did Craig, you? thank you very much for the 22 months anyway. Uh, yeah. Just saying, uh, just got my gold beanie and I love it. I think I read that out earlier. Craig. Sweet, so. thanks, Craig. Cheers again for your support. Easy Jets uh, in. Let me work out where I want to. Uh, yeah, this was the one from Innsbruck. Yeah. If you are enjoying the stream today, folks, if you can click that like button for us, we'd really appreciate it. It's a great way of supporting us for free. 
We're on 727 likes. Can we get to a thousand likes in the next couple of minutes? I think we can. Let's do it. Hit that like button, guys. Thank you. And Linda's just got her gold beanie. Hey. Yeah, they'll start arriving today. Some will be arriving today to people, and some will be arriving uh, tomorrow and the day after. Thanks, all. And Steve Barnes, 27 months of membership. Another great stream. Thanks for keeping me sane. Hey, cheers, Steve. Cheers, Thanks Steve. for allowing us to uh, do this as a job, mate, because I was losing my sanity at my last one, I'll be honest. <laughs> Another yeah. ATR on the way out. I've seen you for a while, Steve. Hope you're well. Hey, Michelle, a brand new Premium Economy member, and uh, your brand new member number 30 today, Michelle. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michelle. Welcome into VIP. Whoa. Awesome, awesome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Easy, son. <laughs> yeah, I think this needs tightened, if I'm honest, uh, which is something that I really can't do by hand. Um, yeah, let but, me... Yeah, I but, think I've got a multi-tool down here. Oh, so. man's got a multi-tool. Yeah, I've got everything down here, mate. I'm... I'm, I'm uh, got boxes of all little knick-knacks <laughs> down here. Yeah. Got biscuits and all sorts. You're not a true bloke until you've got a multi-tool somewhere. Mate, not a true stage and if you've not got at least two <laughs> Leathermans oh that was on. it yeah 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 uh, be happy I'll no bring worries. it up for you now yeah throw it up yeah I'll throw get, this get, up with get, a knife get the on knife. it that's a great <laughs> idea <yeah. laughs> catch up you yeah. gotta be careful not to come out with this in your pocket <laughs> like, well, you know what I mean you yeah. just say oh what, what are you doing oh nothing just empty your pockets for me you're like this you whip knife I mean it's like <laughs> guys who had the apple on their head it's like oh get, get the apple <laughs> <laughs> Cheers all for tuning in today. Hope you're enjoying the Midweek Madness show. It's been pretty mad today. It's not been massively busy at Manchester, but it's just... I've noticed January in general... Oh, my head, son. <laughs> I've noticed January in general is just not mad busy at Manchester. Sunday... Uh, sorry, uh, Sundays have been all right, though. It's, it's Sundays haven't been very quiet, uh, very... Well, they've been very lively, I've noticed. Uh, like, Sunday just gone, it was just... There was always something going on, you know? So... Yeah, maybe it's that just, helping? Well, maybe. To be clear, that stays locked up here in cases like today. It's uh, don't yeah. come about with me. I'm not walking around the park with it in my pocket. It's down in my little box down there. And uh, Rachel, thank you very much for the 21 uh, months of membership. Saying thanks for the great content, hard work, and the community as well. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, thanks for your long term support. I don't think that's helping. Yeah, there are people in the world who go, oh, well, you know, well, I saw it on his live stream. He, he had this in his pocket the whole time. <clears throat> Crazy guy. Sounds like you guys are multi-tool. Well, we're, ah, tool, we're definitely tools. I don't know. I've been called that a few times. <laughs> Is it not working, no? No, it's... Is it too, too big? It's not that. It's like the actual uh, connection is odd. Hmm. Uh, we'll see. See how it goes on. Let right. me poke my head through the sock and see what it looks like. Yeah. Because I might have something for you. Stand by, chat. Hold on. Uh, just a little uh, bolt that needs tightering and folks. But I guess you get to see all of it. Have a look at this. Come on up. Come to my office. All right there, boss. <laughs> so it's this needs twisting, but it doesn't. If you look, that doesn't look like that. It tightens, you know what I mean? It's weird, and it's, uh, that's just gotten loose today. Oh, maybe, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. There's like a little thin thing on that. I'll just put it in the bag there. You can see it poking out. Oi, 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 oi. What, what camera is it on, by the way? Is it on the zoomed one? You guys are seeing us <laughs> wiggle around. Oh, you're uh, too well, the actual big one. I mean, the, this this big. Oh, that? Yeah. As I'm saying, you need like something thin to poke in there, and... <laughs> there you go, that'll do. Maybe it's that? Yeah, it must be that there. Yeah. We've got, we've got Alan. Yeah, yeah, go, go grab that. Whee! This must sound so weird from a, a viewer's point of view. Call a fitter. How's everyone doing today? We all we all having fun. I'm a little teapot. 
I so thought the um, I thought the Allen keys was in your streaming bag. I think they're just down there. They should be down there so Maybe. Stand by, chat. We we stand by. <laughs> We're a professional establishment, by the way. But one sec, hold on. We can't have cameras falling off everywhere. Hold, hold on, guys. Has anyone got any elevator music we can play for a minute? Stand stand by. <laughs> wow. Karaoke. You got it. That's not the right one. Yeah. Right, I think we'll um, we'll just stick with one camera, um, guys. We'll just stick with one camera for the rest of the show because, yeah, I can't find the melon key. So we'll uh, just swap a couple of things up on the roof. Give us a minute. Um, see, I mean, I, I can't even run up and down the stairs. I'm so far. Um, but yeah, we're uh, we're just going to go to one camera, I think, today, and we'll uh, we'll fix it after. Brownies up and down, up and down, like that meerkat that's lost in Reddish Vale. <laughs> Um, right, Bosch. Bosch. There you go. Cool. Days. So that's why you have two cameras. Yes. Uh, I think we might have nudged the exposure wheel on that one as well. It's a bit low. Low, low, low. Oh, it's been recording this whole time. Why? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Behind the scenes. Yay. See, so guys, sometimes. You just have to fix things, it just is how it is. EasyJet A320 coming on in. As we were off there. Does anyone know where the Emirates A380 is as well? Coming on in. That probably isn't a million miles away at this point. It's over Cologne. Right, so... An hour and ten minutes away. Okay. Not super far away. <clears throat> Sorry about that little uh, break, chat. Get back into it. Oh. Was this one that went around, is it? Not 100% sure. Uh, yes, it is, yeah. Okay. Great job, EasyJet crew. In from Alicante. Two landings for the price of one. And uh, next is a Ryanair in from Dublin, and then Turkish Airlines turning in behind that. A321 from Istanbul. One more hour to the king. Yeah, about that. One hour, one hour and a half, something like that. Add it to the list on a whole loopy. That one's easy. That's just a, uh, just needs an Allen key tightening. But we do have a set of Allen keys, and it's usually in the streaming bag, but it's not in there. So maybe we've took it out at the office to fix something and forgot to put it back in. I don't know. We've uh, been fixing a lot of stuff recently, so. <laughs> really That's have. all good. It's all good. Thanks to everyone who's been gifting memberships today as well, guys. 30 brand new VIPs 
on the stream. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's an awesome amount of support. Thank you, everybody. Really is. Thank you. Yeah, thanks all. Yeah, it's definitely a lull in traffic on the, the Januaries, um, especially midweek, but we've definitely not felt that on the Sundays. Yeah, it is weird, isn't it, the midweeks at the moment? They do seem really, really quiet. Yeah, especially relative to the Sundays where they're still super busy. Like this Sunday just gone, it was crazy. It was just non-stop. Don't think we had a chance to breathe. No. Is what it is, especially when the summer season comes and it's going to pick back up again on the midweeks. Windy arrivals. This easy, yeah. Uh, sorry, this Ryanair not not getting blown around too much, but as you can hear on the microphones, it is pretty choppy at Manchester today. See that nose down correction there, just to get the wheels down on the ground. Not too bad. Rolling out, 2-3 right, the Ryanair 737-800 series. Surprised we haven't got all the uh, the media companies in our DMs. EasyJet struggles to land. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. Yeah. The moment when EasyJet goes around. Don't know what you mean, uh, Craig, by that thing. That question about the Radisson Blue Hotel. I don't know. Another aircraft coming in as well. Looks like an Airbus airliner next to land. A Turkish, maybe? We'll see. Uh, yeah, A321. Cool. And uh, Bev, thank you very much gifting an airline of live membership to the community and Paul also gifting a membership to the community as well thank you very very much what happened to that easy jet did it go around yeah it just decided to give it another go on the landing floated a little bit too much not a drama it's pretty windy today as well like I said and I think although these airliners can look pretty settled it's they're still dealing with a lot of wind and that becomes more significant as you about to touch down. You've got to correct the aircraft to be lined up with the runway as well. Often you'll see the, the rudder doing a lot of that work. There's Turkish Airlines next to land anyway. A lot of these Airbus airliners as well, they'll have the autopilot in till pretty late on when the pilot takes control and then puts the plane down on the runway. There you go. Aircraft down on the ground. No messing around. But yeah, the EasyJet went around and just came back and then landed. Fine. It was inbound from Alicante.
one of the window blinds down there. Always baffles me when people have window blinds closed on a landing. Maybe nervous flyers or whatever, but I don't know. You're supposed to have them open anyway. It's part of regulation, but if you're, uh, you know, if you've got the window seat, might as well use it. bit of work going on down at the start of 2-3 uh, left as well, you can see there. There's quite a lot of uh, work planned across the airport in the next couple of months on the taxiways and on the runways and stuff like that, so we will see a couple of different um, configurations of the airfield going forwards. Hey Tom, welcome in. Hello. The aircraft coming in. The wind has definitely just picked up a lot, though. Yeah, it's in from uh, Frankfurt, Lufthansa. That's followed in by the Transavia uh, operating out of Amsterdam on behalf of KLM. Wow, Karen. Well, fair play that you're tuning in so late in the evening over in Sydney. Hey, welcome in. Hope you're enjoying this evening's entertainment. Courtesy of Airliners Live here at Manchester Airport. Stream every Wednesday and Sunday. Yeah, Vinny, as I was saying before, mate, I'm really excited for Royal Jordanian. Oh, I think yes. the more carriers like that we can get at Manchester, the better the streams are going to be. And I know that's really not high on the list of priorities, but for us being completely selfish, I want to see as many carriers like that as possible, sort of different... Uh, destinations, different aircraft, nice liveries. Yeah, more of that. It's a great livery, isn't it, Royal, Royal Jordanian? Yeah, it's going to be awesome seeing that. Gold, red, and black. Or dark grey, should I say. I think the gold will really pop in the sun. Mm. Yeah, one for the the uh, evening shows. Oh, yeah. I don't think they're going to be uh, departing then, but I think the times are up and live. Uh, I think SPD Travels put them up. I think it's going to be another, uh, you know, just just like uh, most international carriers, kind of coming in in the morning, going out early afternoon type situation. Just fine. Yeah, I think they start in April. Yeah, I think there's actually a, technically a storm today. Um, Is there? I, yeah, I, th I think some parts of the country get a lot windier than this um, I know Jonathan Winton is doing a stream I think today at Newcastle airport and I think it's uh, a lot windier up there yeah coming in from the east uh, Amatrine saying yeah so yeah so the east coast are going to get it a lot more than us hey Jenny great to see you Thanks for stopping in. I when are these starting? Um, in a couple of months, I think. Yeah, about April, about I think. April time, yeah. Yeah, I think April is like the start of like the the summer season for uh, aviation. Uh, that's when we're going to see runway two used a lot more, and also like Virgin starting the uh, the Las Vegas route, for example, and plenty of other routes are going to start changing around about then. And Jenny returning for 34 months. Jump seat member, nearly a Wookiee. Cheers, Jenny. Nice. Chasing down Paul, he's just got his Wookiee badge. Yeah, I think there's a Met Office wind warnings for parts of the country today. Not here at Manchester, though. So we're all good. Although it is pretty windy, though. Yeah, it's definitely coming around, isn't it? Yes. Definitely a lot windier than normal. Matt Smith saying 3rd of April. Cheers, Matt. For Royal Jordanian. Another, another thing we'd love to see as well is... Um, Egypt Air 
maybe operating some wide bodies as well that, that's possible all depends on demand but I'd certainly love to see some of their triples or A330s in Manchester I think it's definitely within the realm of possibility they've already upgraded the size once from a 737-800 to an A321 Neo This is a lot windier than was forecast, though. Great landing by the Transavia, 737, in the old colours. Twenty year or the old that aircraft. Hmm. I seen uh, it was either today or yesterday the oldest British Airways A320 uh, family aircraft retired went off to uh, I think St Athen to be scrapped I think it was an A319 I think it was I can't remember the age of it though well, I don't know John I've not heard that mate actually. Take care, George. Yeah, Link, 100%. The new Transavia 321s look amazing. Apart from the bright green seats, <laughs> they are the only bright. things I would uh, change. I would have swapped them for like a black with like a green logo or something. But mm. yeah, the bright green seats are the only thing that I don't like about it. But the exterior and the the way they've put the livery on the aircraft looks amazing, I think. It is very bright. They are smart. I mean, for a low-cost carrier, having, like, USB-C ports in the seats and stuff is great. Mm. But, yeah. They're not actually that cheap, though. Yeah, seeing that, Erica, that's super sad news. Sadly, I'm all... I'm busy on Friday, but, um, yeah, um, the next Jet 2757 will be leaving us for the last time. And it's sadly the the prettiest, arguably, LSAB. Is it that late, uh, Matt? I thought it was a lot earlier than that. Virgin bringing the A350 back on the 24th of June. I thought it was like in April or something. Is it not when they're starting the Las Vegas route? Or is, is that in June? Let me know. I might just get, be getting all these dates confused because... There's uh, a lot happening, isn't there? Yes. A380 is currently over Brussels, so that's about 50 minutes away. Sweet. And uh, next to land, uh, the Ryanair in from Valencia. And that's followed in by Aer Lingus uh, in the green scheme, arriving in from Dublin. Green scheme? The green scheme. Mean green. Flying machine. machine. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Roy, um, thank you for reminding me, mate. Um, yeah, don't forget, folks, there is no Matt Cam show on Friday this week. I'm, I'm glad you've just typed that in, Roy, because I was going to leave the key here as well. Um, yeah, no Matt Cam show on Friday, folks, unfortunately, this week. Ah. Oh. Fair play, though. He's He, he said that he'd only do some Fridays or where he can and... I think he's done every single Friday bar one so far, and this is only the second show he's missed, so yeah, fair play. What a guy. I know you folks love the Macam Friday shows. Fry yays. Wondering the... Uh... Oh, actually, I'll speak to Matt about that before I say it on the street.
crew up front doing a great job. Flying this Ryanair UK aircraft. Golf designated UK India on the on the reg. Is that a Scandinavian on the way back out? That beautiful A320 Neo just looks like she just started the second engine there. <clears throat> it is interesting seeing people uh, use their miles commands in the chat as well. I know a lot of people have a lot of stream miles at this point. Um, you get stream miles, folks, automatically by watching the stream. But the only caveat is you've got to be active in the chat. So you have to be sending messages, talking to people, and then just uh, watching along. And then you'll automatically accumulate miles. And then uh, in the long term, we'll be uh, determining special prizes, I suppose you could call it. You know, certain, certain things that you hit by hitting certain milestones, maybe discounts on merch, giveaways, things like that. Uh, but for now, it's like a nice little leaderboard and a way to just see how how much of a super fan you are, I guess. <laughs> I think it only works live, though, so anyone watching this pre-recorded, uh, I don't think you're gaining the miles because obviously there's no chat that you can interact with. Hey, Dave. Hope you're doing well, mate. Thanks for tuning in. Is that Aer Lingus in the classic colours? Love it. Very Irish. To get the emojis, you need to be one of our paying members uh, gaming with uh, Emin. So if you hit the dollar symbol, then click join, you can uh, get signed up for VIP. Yep. sure how many miles I have. I don't have that many. Although I'm always in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't interact because, uh, well, I'm busy. I'm lurking in my own chat. Working and lurking. Very pretty. Aer Lingus. Um, Ronald Alexander tuning in from Tennessee. Wow. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to you. Thank you for tuning in today. It's the return of St. Mel. <laughs> We've seen her on Sunday, I think. We were joking because on the other side it's just Mel. <laughs> yeah. And this is St. Mel. Name of the aircraft. From green to red, we've got a Norwegian 737. Taxiing out. And Pia saying, uh, so fun being here, getting addicted to this community. That's awesome, Pia. I'm really glad that you're, uh, you're enjoying the streams. Um, and we love seeing people sort of get involved in the community. And then uh, we see you, like, regularly in the chat. That's, uh, that's awesome. So thank you very much for getting involved. And, yeah, we do try our best to really make the channel a super welcoming place for, for new people. And, uh, yeah, I'm really glad that you're enjoying being here. Thank you very much. It's always interesting how that community expands across borders as well. It's like just people from all over the world watching and just getting involved and joining in. Yeah. I just find that amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. If anyone is new, we'd love to invite you to get involved in the chat. Um, it may seem daunting at first with quite a lot of us in here, but, yeah, you'll get a very friendly welcome from our community in here on LLS Live. So if you are enjoying yourself, you want to get involved, uh, please feel free to say hello. Beastie just saying that she's lurking today, but wanted to say hello. Hello, Beastie. Hello. Hope you're doing well today. Afternoon from Londonderry, saying David. I almost went to Londonderry once, David, but good afternoon to you. Um, I've been to Port Rush. I'm sure that's you, you recognise that name. And is it Bally Castle as well? Very beautiful part of the world, that Northern Ireland. Cheers, Gemma. Thank you very much. You know what was weird about going to Northern Ireland, though? The weirdest thing about it was you go to places like Port Rush, which are almost like countryside. It's a seaside town, but um, 
you know, it's, it's here in the UK, I guess. It's Northern Ireland. You're using, you know, pounds, you know, like as currency. But like Scotland, they have their own, um, you know, like money, I guess you call it. Like their, their own version of pounds. They have their own notes and stuff. And when I went over there, I had some cash with me. And I, I bought something with like a 20 pound note. And the guy was like, wow, thanks for that. Like, I collect these. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, it's from England, isn't it? It's like a, a, pound, a, a 20 pound note. I'm like, yeah, is that not normal? He's like, no, they're, they're quite rare around here, like, to see them. Oh, right. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, well, have it then. And then and I had one of his as well. And Have it then, give me a Mars bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yours, sir. <laughs> and there, there was a lot of people who were, like, blown away by just the, the money that we have. I don't know, it's just, it's weird. I don't know how prominent they are in Scotland. I know sometimes you see Scottish notes over here, but you very rarely see Irish, Northern Irish notes. Um, that was about five six years ago maybe that's still a thing i don't know you always get confused when someone tries to pay with uh, with another note and you're like am i allowed to take i know this it's money? and you're like is this legit like how do i know like it's, it's <laughs> completely different because so, for those watching internationally we have pounds of course which obviously you got like what a five pound note 10 pound note 20 i think there's a 50 pound note as well which you'll rarely see but if you go to scotland or northern ireland they have their own versions of them but it's the same tender so you can just, like, go to Scotland and buy stuff with ours or Northern Ireland and vice versa. But we just don't see them in circulation here. It's weird. I don't I don't know why. Yeah. It's a bit of a weird topic, but I genuinely wonder, like, how much longer we're really going to have cash for because uh, yeah. it's just... It just feels weird to pay with cash now. It does. With everything being on your phone or obviously you've got contactless cards and stuff like that. Mm. It's... Um, yeah, it definitely feels like cash is... Not disappearing, but it's definitely becoming like not the normal way to pay anymore. It's definitely the convenience has kind of taken over, isn't it? Mm. The convenience of card. Yeah, I very rarely even have cash, never mind use it, yeah. That's a good point, yeah. In Europe as well, you get that same thing where each country has its own euro notes and stuff. It's just weirder in the UK because it's just one country and we have, like, all these different <laughs> currencies, even though they're not different currencies. Weird. Yeah, Zan Luan, that's right, yeah. So you don't you don't pay for anything with cash, but you still need to find a quid for the trolley. Yes. Unless you've got an airliner's live trolley coin, which I've also... I don't know why I'm saying that because it was sold out ages <laughs> ago. <laughs> no. <laughs> I uh, had to go to a laundrette, and that's only, that was like cash only. I, I just point out as well, my dad said we wouldn't sell them. Oh, yeah. Remember? They? They sold, they've all sold out, we've got none left. Yeah. Yeah. One thing we have quite a few of as well, folks, is the coasters. Um, they're, they're a nice little product. I've actually put a little feature in the newsletter about them. <coughs> I think every month I'm going to do like a little, a little product feature talking about the product itself, about things that are still in stock, because we love them coasters. Easy jet on the way out to Tenerife. Very distinct sound from them Neo engines. Leap 1A, and wow, the climb is crazy. Powering out of Manchester Airport, two three right. Them Neo engines, man, they, they have some power. I know we've heard it from Captain Mark and stuff. He likes the Neos. Need cash if you want to leave a t- tip. That's true, Joe. And I always feel really... Does anyone else feel strange when you're in a restaurant and you want to tip them on card, but you've got to do it through the machine? And you're there like... You're like, how are you going to get that? Exactly. Like, how is that going to make its way to you? Like, yeah. it's got to go all the way to a bank and then the, the restaurant's got to then sort it out and... I don't know, like, I just want to tip this person. <laughs> like, yeah. just that you have, have a few quid. <laughs> if you are enjoying today's stream, though, give it a like if you can, guys. We'd really appreciate it. And thanks to all those who are tuning in today. We understand it is through January, it is quite quiet on our midweeks, but it will pick up uh, over the next week and months. And uh, as we move into the more sort of holiday period as uh, as it is, obviously a lot of people aren't really travelling as much are they through January, so mm-hmm. it's a uh, it's a little bit of a quieter period. But I think uh, 
think it's still busy enough to keep a show rolling for you guys anyway. One video that we are doing a bit of research into that we were talking about yesterday was skip lagging. Yeah. And I, I did a, a post on, on YouTube yesterday just to get a, a feel of how many people even know about it. And I'm curious, does anyone in the chat, and if you do know what it is, put a brief explanation about what you think it is. And if you've never heard of skip lagging before, put a nay in the chat. Yeah, if you've never heard of it. If you've never heard of it, because I'm really curious, because I'd never heard of it until Andy brought it up um, yesterday. And now I've said, well, you know what, I'll do that video, because I actually want to learn about it. Mm. So um, I'm currently researching and going to write the scripts for that with uh, with Andy as well. But um, yeah, I hadn't heard of it until yesterday. So if you've never heard of it, let us know, because if there's a lot of you who haven't heard of it, I think it may make for a it's, good video. It's interesting. So... I'll, I'll give it a few seconds for people to catch up. A lot of nays, though. Wow. Okay, what's the alternative then for it? It's called Hidden City Ticketing. Have you heard of that? I think that's what they call it in the US sometimes. Hidden City hidden city Ticketing. That's hard to say. Yeah. Airline, it, Bev's put it. Okay, there's one, <laughs> one person knows. So, folks, I'll just give a quick TLDR. Too long, didn't read. Skip lagging is a practice in aviation for those who are booking tickets for airlines. And it's basically the art of making your layover destination, your transfer destination, your final destination. And what that means is um, a really good example of this, really, really good example, is something that I've never done it myself, but I see it all the time. I have the opportunity to do it, but I haven't, is we want to go to Frankfurt, right? That's an airport you can fly to from Manchester. And there's only one airline that flies directly to the main airport in Frankfurt. And that's Lufthansa. And Lufthansa are not cheap. Um, you're talking like, you're, to get a return to Frankfurt from Manchester, you're talking like 200 quid each way, plus fees on top of that for like luggage and stuff, reserve seat, whatever you want. Um, and for that price, when you're talking 500 quid return, I could fly to New York and back for that, you know. Anyway, that's quite expensive. So in April, Lufthansa do a special route where they do Frankfurt to Mallorca, Palma de Mallorca, on the 747s. And I looked at prices of that, and I was like, right, I want to do that, because that sounds great. Interestingly, right, to fly from Manchester to Mallorca with Lufthansa via Frankfurt is cheaper than flying to Frankfurt and back. With the same airline, but you're, you're getting an extra flight, but it's cheaper. Yeah. It's weird. But and to make it very, very clear to you guys, it is heavily, heavily frowned upon by the airlines. Mm. And um, some airlines uh, actually ban you as well for doing yeah. this. So, so to be totally clear, guys, this is not us recommending you do this. Yeah. And what the video is going to be exploring is, is it legal? What is it the airlines don't like about it? Why is it even possible in the first place? But again, to be completely yeah. clear, do not go and do this, guys, yeah. because it is so, massively frowned upon. So to complete it, the thing that is frowned upon is you could book that flight to Palma de Mallorca for cheaper. Like, I literally did a search and I found one that was like 20 quid cheaper, just straight off the bat. I didn't do any deep searching. I just found one. But let's say I wanted to go to Frankfurt. I'd book that flight to Mallorca and get off at Frankfurt. You can't do it if you've booked checked luggage, because obviously your luggage is going to end up in Mallorca. Um, but it's apparently against airline policy to do that. It's not illegal. It's against the policy, which is really weird because they've done that. They've set it up so that you get off the plane at Frankfurt. You're walking around the airport. Oops, I missed my flight to Mallorca. I'm in Frankfurt now. I saved money by doing this. But it's not it's it's super awkward this is why it's such a, a hot topic because airlines can actually ban you and there are instances of especially in the US but I know Lufthansa are big on this as well if you get caught doing this deliberately you can get banned from the airline yeah. that's a big consequence um, and again it's not something we advocate for it's a strange thing that and as you can see it's quite a weird conversation and it's a conversation that you you have to make clear a lot of different steps as well. So this is why we're going to do a video on it, guys. So yep. we won't say any more because we might as well not do the video at that point. Yeah. But um, it's yeah, it's a really interesting topic and it's something that we're going to look into the, a bit further. The video will go into, like, is it even allowed? Like, Because another thing that makes it super interesting, there's a website called skiplagged.com, I think it's called. And that is, like, a website tailor-built for you to book flights through this loophole and it still exists and you can buy tickets through there and it i think they've had 
hassle from the airline, should we put it lightly. But they still trade and it still works. And, you know, it, you're not going to get scammed using it, for example, but you could end up in situations that result in things. So the video is going to be about, is that illegal? Or more importantly, is it allowed, right? Like, and that, that's what the video will be. So Airliners Lounge, uh, coming weeks, I guess. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned for that. That's the next video on the way. And uh, there's a question in the chat from Sharon just saying, uh, am I able to buy something from Australia? I assume you mean uh, from our merch store, uh, merch store Sharon, uh, in which case, yes, you can. Uh, we have international shipping to uh, Australia uh, built into the merch store, yeah. Don't you get checked in for both flights at the first airport? Yeah, so let's say I went from Manchester to Palmer de Mallorca via Frankfurt. My ticket would say Palmer on it. So, And obviously if I checked any luggage in, that would end up at Palmer. So if you were to do it, I guess, skip lagging uh, deliberately, you wouldn't want to do that because you'd end up with luggage. You'd end up with no luggage, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Andy Park, thank you very much for uh, sending a £5 donation. Saying, are you guys doing a live from Liverpool for the Jet 2 launch in March? Um, we've not heard anything yet. Um, I, I think mean, it'd be nice. Usually it'd be nice they, do, uh, they do reach out to us. So. It'd be nice to, yeah. We were there for the inaugural arrival of um, Play Airlines, but we didn't do a stream for that. Um, but I think we'll definitely be there for at least the a pre-recording of it. Um, but I'm sure they'll they'll be happy to get us uh, yeah. get us in for a live stream. I think that'd be a great occasion, because that, that is such a significant change for the airport, having a huge airline like Jet2 starting up. And they've got a lot of routes planned as well. It's, it's not going to be just one or two routes. It's a lot. It's a whole host of destinations opening up from a huge airline um, with a massive sort of new uh, influx of, of workers as well. It's, it, they're going to have all sorts. Wow, that's a big fire. Wow. <laughs> that, was, that was bright. <laughs> Yeah, some fire training taking place uh, over there. Don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be a really interesting video. So we'll uh, we'll definitely do a bit more of that as and when we can. Just giving uh, the uh, airfield duty manager a wave there. Just driving past uh, the RVP. But uh, yeah, look at that fire, raging fire. Just doing a bit of training and uh, on that uh, mock up aircraft. If they move that here, warm it up a bit, that'd be yeah. nice. I've been told that aircraft's quite interesting because on the inside, there's a lot of different platforms for them to walk on. And the idea of that is, it, they're all the different like angles and stuff, almost like a, you know, like one of them, um, what are they called? The, the crazy houses, I don't know what they're called, but... Jungle gyms. Maybe, yeah. You know the, like, the ones that like theme parks where they have all the, the, yeah, the yeah, crazy yeah. mirrors and stuff? It's like that, and it's, it's purpose-built for them to deal with different inclines, you know, carrying their equipment up and down and dealing with different sort of uh, conditions inside the, the the aircraft. Yeah, it's a training rig. <laughs> yes. They have a training rig at Barton Aerodrome as well. Sam's used it many times. Um, Sam is, of course, fire and rescue at Barton Aerodrome. And, uh, yeah, they say it's... Uh, I mean, it's obvious, but the heat, man, that you're dealing with, even when you're full suit... You know, you're still getting this huge fire, and it's getting under your your uh, visor and stuff, and it's mm -hmm. it's hard work. Hey, I wonder. I wonder if if we'd be allowed to have a go. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I mean, can you imagine just like experiencing what that's like? There's um, that Tom Scott, who's a big YouTuber. He has a series where he like tries different things like that, like often things quite extreme like uh, walking on tight ropes and stuff, crazy stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, that would be something in that style. I think the problem is with that is, like, how who would film it in that sense? That's the thing. Yeah, you don't want to use a GoPro because they don't overheat. <laughs> <laughs> the overheat being stuck on a window in, in, in Manchester Airport. How are they going to handle a, a raging inferno? I'll speak to Sam. One thing I do want to do, though, is just film it in general, just them doing it. Yeah. Because that if, would... if you do, I, I don't mind giving it a blaz. I, I'd, yeah. give it, I'd give it a blaz, yeah. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd film it. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd give film. it a go. I think that would be mad with you, that. <clears throat> Ryanair about to touch down, uh, and that's in from uh, Santander. And uh, having a look on the A380, it's uh, over the UK now. Uh, so it should be with us in about 30 minutes' time. Nice. 
which will be our last arrival for today's show. We've also got a nice uh, British Airways A321neo on the way. They don't send them all too often, so that'll be a nice, uh, a nice one to see. Carlos in the chat as well um, from Plain Talking UK podcast. I did see your email, Carlos. Actually, I just remembered. Um, I need to reply to that still. Uh, hope you guys are well though. It's been quite a hectic few weeks in the office. And I don't like just rushing emails like that. I want to properly reply. Yeah, they are so cool at Barton Aerodrome, though, aren't they? Like, everyone who works there is mega, and the airfield itself is great. Looking forward to doing more live streams from there. Yeah, Roy, it will do because you're not paying any UK tax, so you'll pay the tax at the destination frontier. I think that's the same for any international shipment, I think, now. Yeah. Is that how it works, is it? So, like. Well, yeah, you don't pay tax on okay. our. You shouldn't be paying tax on our website, no. Huh, cool. Easy Jets. A320 Neo departing. To Hagada. Wow. One of the longest flights. Yeah. Easy jet off here at Manchester. Really long. Not seen too much of the old easy jet holding stuff going on lately. No, I've not. I wonder if that's just more of a summer thing, maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. I've really not been doing it. But saying that, though, like, for example, when I went to Amsterdam back in May last year, um, we held at the gate instead. So we, we, everyone was boarded, the door was closed, and he said, right, we can't move because our ATC slot's not for a little bit. So um, we were sat there for a little while. And obviously on a short flight like Manchester to Amsterdam, even being stuck there for 10, 15 minutes adds yeah. a lot because it's only like an hour flight anyway. Got a Virgin Atlantic A330 on the taxi out, a nice heavy departure coming right up for you guys. I was in uh, Amsterdam in the sim the other day, and I did the uh, the taxi all the way down to the Polderbahn. Yeah, that's a crazy taxi, that, isn't it? Crazy that is taxi. A long, long taxi. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So you taxied out to that? Yeah. Wow, okay. Uh, Drew saying, uh, what's your coat brand, Andy, and where's it from? This is Decathlon's own brand, this. So Decathlon, which is a like a high street brand. Yeah. Um, I've dabbled with all different coats, but I mean, you you've got the same one actually. But yours is a, like a soft, yeah, soft shell one. This is a, I don't know if they still sell this one, but this is like the inside. It was like a you know like a three in one type deal, and this is one of the inner layers. Uh, it's really warm though, folks. Really warm. Oh, is that why I don't recognise it? Because you're just wearing the inner layer. Yes. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. Huh? Yeah, it's really warm though. It's, it's a. Uh, yeah, the Cathlon's own brand. I think it was 100 quid, I think it was, brand new. Um, which I know is quite a bit of money, but when it comes to investing in clothing that's going to keep you warm, I'm happy to pay a premium. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why our hoodies aren't super cheap, because we actually like to have ones that are premium and warm and going to last a long time as well. Have you ever tried VR in MSFS? No, because I get motion sick with any sort of motion in VR. I'm all right with static games, so like things like ping pong or... You know, anything where you're kind of moving relatively, but any time I have to walk mm. um, or the world around you is moving whilst you're not, that's when I get sick. I'm, yeah. I'm all right every other... Like, I can sit and do the big screen VR and watch cinema and stuff, but I can't do anything that involves motion, unfortunately. What's your favourite VR thing that you've done, though, so far? Like, is there anything that you've been like, that's great? I'd, well, I'd, I'd just do ping pong, mate. Ping pong. I just like, I just enjoy the ping pong. And I, you know what I like about it is you can play online against other people. Yeah. And every time you come in, you like wave at them and that. Yeah. And, they, and you can see what they're doing. Yeah. And like, you, you're winning points and you can see them going like this, like, yes, and all this. It's so funny. <laughs> and it's dead accurate as well. So with the with the VR ping pong, I don't know how they've done the vibration rumblers in the, in the things that you hold, mm. but you put the ball on the um, the paddle mm. 
And as you move the ball around the paddle, like moving your arm and stuff, you can feel where the ball is. That's weird. It's so mad. It's like it's actually on it. And they've done it so well that you can literally have your eyes shut and know exactly where the ball is on the paddle. It's crazy. They've done some really good stuff with uh, with the remotes and that. Um, and as I say, it's dead accurate. So you can have a really good quality game of ping pong. It's not like laggy or... You can you can really like put spin on the ball and and it's dead accurate. So, wow! Yeah, it's it's really come like a long long way. I still have in my house one of the old, I think it was the original Oculus Rift that was public, like the first uh, public one, because I know they had a lot of dev kits before then. And um, for me, it was that super hot game. Yeah, that's, super, that's super, fun. Super hot VR. That is, oh, that is so good. Hey, Andy says, I've just received my coin in Virginia, US, number wow. 125. Nice. Hey, that came quick. Look at that little and large there. That's yeah. cool, isn't it? Hey, Gerald. Welcome in, mate. Hope you're doing well. That was quick if it's got all the way to the US already. Practically Geek, I do still need to play you at, at, at ping pong, mate. You're right. Honestly, we've just been, every evening, we've just been looking at houses. We're just, we're really struggling, to be honest with you, to find mm. somewhere that we want to put an offer in on. So, um, yeah, we kind of, kind of... It's been taking all your time. It's, yeah, it's, I go home and I'm just looking at houses. I think, uh, it'll, we, I think yeah, it'll be worth the wait, though. I think, uh, I think I do need to just take a night off and... And uh, yeah, I have a bit of a game with really. A lot of people commented on that little and large plane. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, it's awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. Definitely get that one up on uh, on Twitter later on. Uh, but that Virgin Atlantic A330 is heading out to Atlanta, and the uh, little aircraft behind it is uh, just hopping over to Brussels. It's a Cessna citation from Aeroways, and next to land a Ryanair in from Brussels as well. Interestingly, Practically Geek, we were talking about this yesterday. Where, would it make a good video? To have, like, you know, is VR Microsoft Flight Simulator immersive? Like, imagine, like, you know, flying... Is it an F-18 that's in that? I can't remember. Um, flying that and then, yeah, trying, like, something like a commercial airliner in VR. Yeah. Is that immersive? I think it would be. Where are you based, Practically Geek? Because I know you've got a VR business, haven't you? That'd be great, yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to do a video with us, <laughs> yeah. uh, Ian, hope you're doing well, mate. Nice to see you, Ian. Are you still flying a lot in the sim, dude? Because I know we used to fly together quite a bit, didn't we? Ian? Another arrival coming in. Winds kind of died down a little bit, but it's still pretty choppy, as you can probably hear from the mic. It's definitely not gone. We did see a go around earlier in the show, maybe partly down to the wind. Wasn't anything too dramatic though. Brian right, S737 rolling out. Hey Nicole, hope you're doing well. Hello. Oh, you work in Liverpool, right? Okay. Awesome. I used to live in Liverpool for about five years in the city centre. Total. Hey Georgia, hope you're doing well. Just vacating the two, the 737-800 series Ryanair aircraft. And I think we have an aircraft lining up. It's another Ryanair. We should see the Virgin wide body depart soon as well. The A330-300 series. I think it's the only A330 variant they've got these days. I think they used to have the A330-200s back in the day. Oh, nice, Ian. Yeah, I still need to download that update, actually. Ryanair fitted with, well, painted with the slightly uncommon yellow stripe on the wing with the, usually they have the text. So it's quite unusual to see that yellow stripe there. You see the Virgin A330, she's holding short of the runway. Just uh, on the move at the moment. 20 minutes to the King, amazing Matt, thank you for the heads up. 
Sounds good, Practical Geek. Is it like a... I mean, I think actually uh, send us an email or... I know you've got us on uh, Twitter, so maybe just send us a message. Because uh, I'd love to ask some questions anyway. I hope you're having a great birthday, dude. Uh, Ken, it's in the second line of the video description, mate. We're, uh, we're live from Manchester, yeah. It's at the very, very top of the description of the video. Yep, it's also in the pinned comment as well. Yeah. <laughs> it is in, like, three places on the channel, dude. Yeah, right at the top of your chat in the blue box. It says live from Manchester Airport. Virgin Atlantic A330 is now lined up, ready to go. Turn your volumes up for this, folks. Yeah, this will be nice. I'd love to visit Liverpool. It's a great city. Paul, it absolutely is. Really, really good. Watching with my wife and three-year-old, uh, three-month-old. Hello, everyone. You imagine what VR will be like when uh, they grow up, eh? <laughs> Weird, isn't it? Yeah. We were talking about it in the mod room, weren't we, the other day? Um, just about how phones have come on whilst we've been alive. And, uh, like I say, you, you just look at VR. I remember when you brought your VR in for the first time to work and we were all baffed by it. And now yeah. that doesn't seem like anything compared to what we've got <laughs> now. I know it's only like five years or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, practically geek. Yeah, absolutely, mate. No worries. Here goes the I find it really rude that my workplace keeps interrupting me while I'm trying to watch the stream. <laughs> <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> Virgin A330 blasting out of Manchester there. Great views. Easy Jets uh, lining up in from Malaga. And then we're going to see the really nice uh, A321 from British Airways. As I say, we don't see it too often. It means semi regular, but it's a really nice looking aircraft, in my opinion. Um, in the sort of uh, short fleet, um, it looks the best in the, in the British Airways livery. So you'll enjoy this, guys. And then just over Derby is the A380, which is our last arrival for today's show. So that's uh, not too far away as well. So a couple of nice arrivals coming up. Go on strike, Lauren. <laughs> it's gone quick today's show. Wow. That's crazy. Not what to do for food today. Yeah, Hi. me too. I, uh, I need to crack on with... Uh, I've got a bit, well, we've got the newsletter to write after today's show, and also uh, I want to crack on with a script as well, so we can have a video to work on next week. Yeah, it's all go. Make sure you're all subscribed, folks. I know you probably already are, but the Airliners Lounge, which is our second YouTube channel that specializes in pre recorded content, I'd 100% recommend getting involved over there. Just hit that subscribe button, help us out, yep. and um, keep an eye out because we've got a video imminently going to be uploaded. Let yeah. us know in the chat if you've never heard of Airliners Lounge as well. Um, or put a nay in the chat if you're not subscribed to it because you've not heard about it before or anything like that. I'd be interested to know how many people watching actually don't even know it exists. But we have a second channel where we put all of our pre-recorded kind of documentary-style videos uh, up on there. So you guys may enjoy that. It's myself and Andy who, um, who present those, those videos. Yeah. Is it like that reel that you showed me? You know, it was like... Well, most people didn't. He was selling like a product online, wasn't he? But yeah. Most people hadn't even heard of it, even though he posts all the time. That was it. It was mad, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I didn't realise that. That kind of like, 
I don't know, it kind of changed my thinking about things. Oh, Brian, thank you very much. Saying I watch every video on Airline Lines, they're awesome. Cheers, Brian, thank, thank you, you very much. That, that, my guy. <laughs> my dude. Yeah, we do put a lot of work into them. It's 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 a lot of the hours that we spend in the day these days. Yeah, I think the plan is for this year, chat, is we want to get a silver plaque for Airliners Lounge before the end of the year. Don't know if we can do it. It's a big push. It is a big push. But we're going to give it a go. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to see if we can do it. And we're not... I know we're, we're, we're spreading the word to you folks, but we're not really reliant on Airliners Live to grow it. We want it to be like its own channel. We want it to like really do well itself and have its own audience. A lot of you... Are the, guys i'm sure will really enjoy it so i do recommend subscribing yeah but i mean a lot of people who watch the videos over there are like people who found just the channel like stumbled upon it on the home screen on the recommendations unfortunately no youtube doesn't offer us any way to give you multi-channel vip guys i'm afraid it's uh, it's not a feature we have that'd be great available um but again we don't expect you guys to be vips on airliners live and vips on airliners lounge um we've set the members up on airliners lounge hopefully for just new viewers who don't even watch airliners live yeah. if they want to support our content but you guys here as i say we we don't expect you to be signing up on uh, on multiple uh multiple channels it's just an extra way to support isn't it really exactly yeah uh what time are the vancouver shows they're usually on saturdays tim um about 9 p.m uk time However, the uh, the week just gone, uh, the weather was terrible. So, uh, yeah, we do struggle in the winter with, with Vancouver, unfortunately. But uh, it, it's supposed to be on Saturday evenings anyway. I want to come to Manchester, but do I travel by bus or train? If you want to come to the Runway Visitor Park, if you go to their website, um, they have a page about how to get here by any different mode of transport. You can fly here. Hey, that's That's one way. There you go. And Rachel's saying she joined TAS after seeing Debbie on the show. Oh. And she's just been reading the uh, TAS newsletter for the first time. So you've received your magazine. Yeah, that's awesome, Rachel. I'm glad you're enjoying that. Nice, Rach. Yeah, I read that every uh, every month. Like I said, the, the root news is good in there. The updates, the articles, the, the historic stuff. Obviously. Hey, no worries, Audrey. No worries. Thanks for tuning in today. Easy Jack coming on in next. Getting blown around a little bit. It is a bit of a crosswind as well today, but it's not too crazy. I'm buttering the runway. Oh my gosh. Love it. They are good, the EasyJet pilots, I've noticed. It's, it's very common for them to but Them and Virgin Atlantic, I think, are like the two that. Oh, no, of course, Saudi. Don't forget. They're like common Oops. butters. I'm, uh, I'm naturally just pressing the wide cam button and realizing <laughs> it's not plugged in. <laughs> wide cam. <laughs> you can see that a bit of construction work going on over there on the uh, start of two, three left. Yeah, I mean, it's not far away now, just over Buxton. Nice. If you have enjoyed today's show, please feel free to give it a like. And if you want to support the work we do here on Airliners Live before the end of today's show, you can do that by gifting memberships to the community by clicking the dollar symbol, then clicking gifted membership, or by sending a donation in. If you use our tip link, we get 100% of your donation, and that helps uh, towards the content we make both here on Airliners Live and on the Airliners Lounge channel as well. And thank you to everyone who's uh, supported the channel today. We really appreciate it. Air, loun Air lounges. Air lounges? Yeah. Air lounges line. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> 1,000 likes. Nice. Well done, everyone. Cheers, all. It's a nice, nice goal for the live shows here. Miles saying I'm on the easy jet that just landed and uh, once I'm off I'm going to replay the landing hey. there you go enjoy that instant replay and uh, Georgia thank you very much for tuning in as well Air Lounge is live that's it yep that's the name <laughs> of the channel <yeah. laughs> that's our next channel 
and you guys on Twitch. If you can support the channel, don't forget to check them Twitch Primes. We get really good viewer numbers on Twitch, but I think a lot of you are lurking. Um, so the support is really low on there. Uh, it does cost us money to transmit over to Twitch at the same time as well. So if you can check those Twitch Primes, we'd really appreciate that. Because that's a free sub you get to use on any channel on Twitch. And we'd really appreciate it if you consider using it on the Airliners Live channel. And thanks to everyone tuning in, of course, as well. We spend a lot of time on Twitch, personally. It's probably uh, my most used app, I would have thought, if I was to look into it. Yeah. Cheers, Practical Geek. That sounds great. Yeah, it may be cool to get you down to the office, man, when we're filming that video. And, uh, yeah, just just get some ideas together. Because I think that'd be a really, really cool video. Nice. Yeah, it is cool. I remember when um, we were at Liverpool Airport doing that stream for the BBMF when they were based there and the Typhoon as well, Blackjack, for the Real Air, Air Show. I think it was 2022 summer in August, bank holiday weekend. And uh, Noel Phillips, uh, the travel vlogger, he flew in that day as well. And he, he got off his plane. He had the Piper PA-28 um, and then walked over to us. And then I showed him his landing on, the, on, a, on a clip. I was like, yeah, that's your landing. You just landed on stream a couple of uh, minutes ago. <laughs> he was like, wow, it's like an instant replay. What's this? Uh, that's on a approach? BA with Neo. Sweet. Love it. And then uh, following that in, looks like they're going to slot Ryanair in before the Emirates uh, in from Oslo. And then the uh, A380. Great stuff. Wind picking up again. Lovely. Certainly I've taken a bit of a battering today. Uh, what do you mean, Carl? What do you mean, no link available? Suze, thank you so much. Gifting a membership to the community. Cheers, Susie. Appreciate that. Cheers, Suze. Yeah, I've never called Susie Suze until she changed her username. <laughs> You've got to change now. Suze. That's so funny. And uh, Jacob, uh, returning member. Number 34 today on today's stream, uh, saying, sorry I've asked this already. I but had to go. Is there uh, one million coins left waiting for payday? Yes, there is. Yep, there's some still left if you want to uh, head over to airliners.live and uh, place your order. There are a few left, folks. If you've not seen them yet, this is stunning. Everyone's receiving them, loving them. Head to Airliners Live. Uh, a one million commemorative coin to celebrate hitting one million subscribers on the channel. And they come with a signed uh, certificate from myself and Andy, which is individually numbered as well. So everybody gets their own unique number. Um, up to 250. There's only 250 of them uh, in total. See you, uh, Flying Peacocks. Yeah, see you in uh, Fez's stream tomorrow evening from 6 p.m. Bev says, I feel a, uh, a name change coming on. What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Folks in the chat, don't try to change your names to something we don't know, though. Uh, obviously, we like recognizing your names in the chat and stuff. But I think you can quite easily change your name on YouTube. And if you are interested in the equipment we use for live streaming, all of the links to our equipment is in our description on YouTube. If you want to take a look for yourself. Yeah, it's really awkward when people change their names for something completely different and we've got to try and remember that that person is this person and it gets very difficult mm. beautiful airliner this oh nice roof glad you're enjoying it Brian tuning in from South Carolina uh, it's Carolina South Southern California I'm having a nightmare today Brian <laughs> I'm sorry mate <laughs> welcome into you apologies Tuning in from Southern California. We try again. That must be super early in the morning then for them. And the A380 yeah, has turned on to finals. Cheers, Malcolm. Great stuff. We'll, try and, we'll try and pick that up out of the skies. 
Just the eyes on this beautiful aircraft, though, as Martin said, this is a really nice combo of livery and airframe. The A321 Neo. <laughs> Scary 2002. <laughs> That's not your nose cone, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you always have uh, pretty uniform registrations, these, as you can see. G Neo X, this one is. So they always have G Neo and then a letter. I like that, though, G Neo X. So that does make you wonder, then. I assume some British Airways plane has more blue than others, then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe, yeah. Because otherwise that would line up, right? Mm. So wow. how does that happen? Maybe it's the Neos versus the, you know, the 320s versus the 321s, maybe? Wow. I don't know. Hopefully one doesn't pop up with a Concorde nose. <laughs> <laughs> that would be obvious. Hey, cheers, TBS. Glad you've enjoyed it. Cheers, dude. Let's see if I can see the king in the skies. Yeah, I think it's just above the clouds. Yeah, I can't see anything just yet. We did, Susie. Thank you very, very much for your support today. I'll give you another bing bong as you're on the phone. There you go. I'm sure it was like Matt or someone like that who started the whole Zeus thing. Was it? I'm sure it was. <laughs> it's Defo Matt who made it popular. Yeah, I can see the king of the skies now. Just emerging. Just as this Ryan S737 touches down. Them split scimitar winglets as well. I do wonder how they affect the aircraft's performance when it's a bit more of a windy day. We know that the Airbus aircraft have a little bit of a harder time, only a little bit, when they have them chocolates on. And Lauren with a 499 donation. Cheers, Lauren. Saying oh, there, thanks. just in case I miss the A380 in the end of the stream uh, because of work, great stream, guys. Thank you very much, Lauren. Cheers for the uh, support to the channel today as well. Cheers, and uh, Ness returning for 12 months. Red tail badge, crew seat member, saying shout out to my husband Ian, who's uh, watching and celebrating his first year as a member. So both of you celebrating uh, <laughs> one year memberships. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, great to see you, Ness. I hope you're doing well. Absolute goals, that, that is. <laughs> It's nice when you have things that you watch that you're both interested in, I guess. Land Emirates A380 arriving in seven hours, seven minutes today. So made good time. Next to arrive here at Manchester behind the departing Lufthansa back to Frankfurt. Let's get them King emotes in the chat, shall we? The Emirates A380 that landed on this route, Emirates Flight 17 on Friday, that Matt caught had a, a viewer of the channel flying the plane. I think he was a captain at the time, and uh, I think it was the FA who landed it. And we shared it on uh, the old X, and it got really popular, and also managed to make its way to the number one most tracked airliner on Flight Radar 24 at the time as well. That's awesome. He was very proud of that. That's right, yeah, them uh, split winglets do offer uh, a fuel savings on them. So for that, whatever, what is it, 200 million that Ryanair spent on all the retrofitting? Um, I think it's worth a while, and they'll have that paid back within three or four years, just based on the savings in fuel.
Uh, oh, yikes, okay. Sorry, I thought it was ruined your recording, but... That's right. Matt just said there's a cargo looks that was due into Prestwick, which uh, looks like it's heading our way. Ah. It's just north of Preston, but it's down to 12,000 feet. Whoa. Okay. So let's just keep an eye on it. I am wounded. Have we got another camera? We have got another camera. What's that, sorry? We've got another camera, haven't we? We've got an SD card. To get a picture? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think so. Just, yes, just make sure you don't. Get in. Wipe it. <laughs> yeah, I won't wipe it. Let me... Uh, I think I do. Stand by, oh. chat. Let me just get this camera ready just in case. Uh, mate, Matt Smith coming in with the info uh, as this Emirates 8280 arrives. Stand by, chat. And, uh, yeah, we do, what, we've do. we seen the A330 as well. What, so. what airframe was that, sorry? Cargo looks 7.4. Oh, okay, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, stand by. Uh, yeah, I'm just getting us ready for Martin. Uh, I have a battery. I think, I think I've seen one in here. There's a battery in there somewhere. I don't know where I put it. But there's there's an SD card in that. You might not even need a battery to be fair. You can just plug it into the one other. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Might not be fully charged, but it might have something on it. <laughs> right. Okay, folks, stick around for that. That's That's something. Um, Emirates A380 just taxiing in we're going to catch the king of the skies taxiing past us with an amazing view yeah that looks like it's coming here doesn't it that looks like it's coming here <laughs> Some uh, things set on my old, on the old uh, phone. What a day to bring the SD card, eh? What are you after? There might be one. Does it? You can whack it on charge via this. that beautiful sky behind the king of the skies as well very dramatic yeah folks keep an eye on the chat uh, on radar sorry we may have a 747 diverting in now for those regular viewers you'll know that a 747 at Manchester is extremely rare extremely rare yeah, this is this is well rare. Yeah, stopping at nine thousand feet now. So we would need it to be at about three and a half thousand. I wouldn't be surprised if this went to east mids. Mm, yeah, but we can hope. I mean, it's still got it's going for eight and a half thousand. So maybe chat. I mean, it's it's bit. It's, 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 it's about low for east mids. To, to yeah, I think I think potentially. Yeah, we we need it to be around three thousand five hundred feet. To intercept here, so we will uh, keep a keep an eye on it. Yeah, yeah, because if it's a diversion for like tech or medical reasons, I don't think it matters as long as they can facilitate the airliner. Well, it looks like it broke off the approach at Prestwick. So maybe and it's maybe making a the turn. Make, maybe a weather-related thing. It's making the turn. Seven and a half thousand, though. You know, over Rochdale. Wasn't the C-17 UAE Air Force? Wasn't that due for Prestwick as well? Right. That was um, that had to break off because of weather, I think. It's coming in. It's coming in. Hundred percent. Wow. Here we go, chat. This is super rare. Live on airliners. Live. Let's uh, get this out on Twitter. Stand by. Uh, Twitter. I'll get a clip of this as well, folks. I am on the camera here with a. Uh, I'm at the ready, really. Go 
Chicago looks 747 at Manchester Airport, folks. What a catch. That is just unbelievably rare at Manchester. We maybe get like one or two a year. And they'll sometimes be down to uh, football charters. Diversions, very rare. Is it a 400 series? I think it is. Yeah. Freighter, obviously. Martin's going to get a picture. And I'm going to get a, a video clip, and you guys are going to see it live. Wow, that's... Considering we just had the C-17s in as well. Wow. You folks are very lucky. <laughs> very lucky, yeah. To be here at live with us. Obviously, we don't know the circumstances, but... Yeah. For plane spotting, sort of in a selfish sense, we're very lucky, but hopefully uh, there's nothing medical or anything like that. It sounds like it's an issue on Prestwick's end. You know, like, uh, maybe the weather or maybe just... You know, something with the ATC there or some reason that it's having to come to Manchester instead. Because for it to go all the way up there and then come all the way back down again, it's, it's probably something airport related, I'm saying. But we don't know. That's just speculation. Educated guesses. Okay, guys, head over to Twitter really quick. Just get a comment, get a like, get a share. We've just posted. Uh, we've just posted on there now. So if you can go and give that a share, guys. And uh, yeah, it's making the right turn. It's a hundred percent coming into Manchester, folks. Welcome to Airliners Live. And uh, yeah, this is this is something quite special for for Manchester in terms of uh, aircraft combo. Mm -hmm. Cargo wow. looks seven four seven sixteen year old aircraft. Registration on it is Lima X Ray. Lima, Charlie, Lima. <laughs> Two Manchester shows in a row we've had rare quad jets at Manchester. This is uh, <laughs> this is something else. So, of course, we're just going to let you enjoy it. We're going to be getting a recording as well, folks, and uh, I'll be running upstairs and grabbing a picture because this is something you really don't see at Manchester uh, for any other reason other than a diversion like this. So, um, here we are. This is uh, this is going to be a nice catch for us playing spotters. Yeah, Sunday we had the United Arab Emirates Air Force C-17 coming in. And now we've got a Cargo Lux 747. Nuts. Both uh, Boeing quad jets, might I add. One obviously military. And also both were bound for Prestwick. So, hey. And thank you to the mods and the viewers and Matt and everyone who uh, alerted us to this because we were literally just about to go offline. So, thank yes. you guys. Although the one on Sunday wasn't bound for Presswick. I think with the United Arab Emirates Air Force, they had one aircraft going to Presswick, it diverted to Manchester, and then they decided to, to to run a couple of other aircraft here to Manchester as well, following that. No visual on it yet. People saying it's the most... Uh, sorry, the second most tracked aircraft right now in the world on Flight Radar 24. Oh, sorry, guys. I, oh, goodness sake. Sorry, folks, I, I just accidentally... I thought it was the plus button. I've just accidentally inserted an ad on the stream. I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> genuinely, I uh, didn't mean to do that. I was trying to create a YouTube post to tell everybody to get in the stream. Let me click the right one. There it is. Oh, I know what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've instantly clicked the one at the top of the dashboard by accident. Sorry, folks. Um... I know what you do. Yeah. Transavia 737 next to the part, heading back to Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. Doing a flight on behalf of KLM 737-700. You see the uh, the fire team doing a bit of training over at the uh, over at the training rig in the background. It was a Transavia 
yeah for anyone who watches us regularly you know we don't we don't do that on purpose that was a mistake my end guys sorry about that uh, but you're all right. You should all be back in time for it landing, I'm sure. It's uh, now on the approach. So here it is. Rare cargo looks diver into Manchester Airport, bound for Prestwick. And uh, it's due to land here now on 2-3 right. Gear's coming down already. Oh, you enjoy this, guys. I'm going to head upstairs and grab a picture. So, uh, yeah, here you go. Enjoy this, folks. Gear's already down. Cargo looks 747 diversion. Into Manchester, super, super rare to see this at Manchester. What a treat. Super windy as well. Wow, <laughs> this is crazy. Like I said, folks, you watching it live are getting treated, but I suppose a lot of you are probably watching pre recorded as well. We are Airliners Live. We broadcast live from Manchester Airport every Wednesday and Sunday and most Fridays. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Cargo Lux 747 diverting into Manchester. Very rare catch. Going to be landing here on runway 23 right. Wow, what a catch. <laughs> what a beauty as well. What a beauty. Jane saying amazing picture quality. Thanks, Jane. This is super rare to see at Manchester these days. I don't think we've had a 747 at Manchester since the summer. Let's get a zoom into this.
Unbelievable. It's emotional seeing a 747 at Manchester again. It really is. Oh, she's going to wait. Oh, look at that. She's known as the Queen of the Skies. What a stunner. Seven four seven freighter with cargo looks diverting into Manchester just at the end of our midweek madness live show here from the runway visitor park Manchester Airport what a treat that was nuts Are we back? And we're back, okay. Sorry about that, folks. I got a recording of that, though. That was something else. We're not crazy. We're not back. <laughs> really? There you go. Huh. No. Stand by, folks. We did. Uh, we did catch it, right? <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah. That was unbelievable. We'll, uh, double check because it's still off. So. <laughs> Mods. Can you let me know? We did we did catch that, right? Please. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So if not, we can uh, we can always play it back. Uh, right, okay. Um, sorry, folks. Yeah, I don't know what's happened at the end there, but we've, we've lost that camera completely now. Um, we could play that back, actually. Should we, should we give that a play back? Well, you, I've lost the camera, mate. I've just want to say it's not back on yet. Oh, I don't know what's... Just... Uh, we did catch the landing. Okay, thank God for that. Why? I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know, guys. We're going to have to wrap it there. I think we need to we need to fix that. But as long as you guys, uh, as long as you guys seen it, um, yeah, what a, what a way to advertise the show. When <laughs> just we spam it everywhere. The show's been fine for the whole show, and then this happens. Anyway, um, we'll look into it. We'll go and get it sorted. Um, but thank you all for tuning in. I'm glad we managed to catch it. That was great. And uh, we'll get a clip uploaded, and also a um, we'll also get the pictures uploaded as well on our channel and thanks to everyone who tuned in today really appreciate it um that was uh that was that was good um oh you have got the camera there i mean we can play the replay free but it'll have no sound anyway so we'll play it on the uh we'll play it on the outro or something guys but yeah keep an eye on our socials we'll get a post out and uh yeah we'll uh, we'll leave it there for today but thank you very much for tuning in yep cheers for uh the shout out mods let's press audio on that channel by the way 
Yeah, okay. Um, is that playing now, though? No. <laughs> oh. Let's just leave it there, mate. Thank you, guys. Cheers for tuning in, and we'll uh, we'll catch oh, you on the next one. See ya. Bye.